Good evening, everyone. This is Eric and Matt, and this is The Sunday Show. Today is April 21st, 2024, uh, one day after 420 days, so I'm sorry you're no longer allowed to get high until next year. Um, Matt, how are you doing? I'm exhausted, but I'm looking forward to this. Uh, this is my first time doing Sunday Show After Dark. I We worked a reptile convention all weekend, and I'm watching the tail end of the candidates tournament uh, for world champion for chess. And so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a fairly slow day today. I just did a lot of yard work and house stuff and kind of just getting ready for this tonight. Uh, so yeah, I'm really pumped. I'm ready to uh, get some calls going and see what comes our way um, on that topic. Uh, yeah. Anybody who is uh, currently, uh, doubting their belief or they have a strong belief they want to put forward and defend or to justify or to uh, challenge uh, feel free to call in you can find the uh, number down below the number is uh area code 70720-619-2288 or you can use the uh, web link in the description for a uh, call in studio um and uh yeah so get your calls in we'll get you queued up and uh we'll get to some discussions going hopefully we'll have a good time tonight yeah, uh, for tonight, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I've been looking forward to this all week. Um, I thought for a moment I wasn't gonna be hosting co hosting tonight, so I was uh, kind of like, okay, I'll just take it easy this weekend. But then I saw, oh yeah, I am going to be on the schedule this weekend, so I was pretty delighted about that. Cool. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, for announcements, um, uh, we have a Patreon here at the line. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash call the line. Uh, and we've launched a new podcast called Live on the Line, and uh, it's hosted by Jimmy Snow. Each episode, at least once a week, he calls another content creator, another skeptic, another atheist, and has an impromptu discussion, and then gives them a quiz, which if they ace, they will win a prize on behalf of one of our patrons. Uh, episodes go out to patrons first, and only patrons who can win prizes and leave comments, which are then read on the air. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, or you just want to simply support the channel, uh, head over to patreon.com slash call the line and become a member. Um, free patrons and Discord only patrons get the show two weeks later. So um, there's a little bit of a delay, but you will eventually see it, even if you're not a member. Um, and anyway, most uh, recent one was Forrest Valkai, according to the notes here. I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, yeah, I had a, I had the privilege or delight of meeting Forrest Valkai when I was down in uh, Austin for the Solar Eclipse. I uh, played some board games, and that was really awesome. So, I mean, uh, he's always a, a fun guy to listen to, very energetic, very knowledgeable. And so, yeah, uh, sorry I missed that. I'm going to go back and, and watch that. Um, so, Matt, do you have any projects going, anything going on, anything you're interested in? I know you're, you're kind of half watching a chess game right now. Uh, Oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm paying attention to this. I've got it <laughs> off to the side, just waiting for it to actually conclude. We've got uh, April's our busiest month, which is for Arden and myself uh, for the Reptile Expos. We did one this past weekend and the weekend before. We're doing another one next weekend. And then after those, we're off for a month or so. And then there's two more Reptile Expos in June and then some stuff in October. So it kind of spaces out kind of quarterly. But also we're we're, we're in the spot where um, our colubrid snakes are um, breeding and about to give us some eggs. And, you know, our ball pythons are breeding pretty much year round. So it's just, I, it's a lot of stuff to do. And, uh, well, you were down here for the uh, yeah. eclipse and saw the rodent work in, in, in person here. So yeah, having fun. Yeah, that was quite that was quite the day i i didn't expect that to be part of my trip but i was so glad it was because it was not only informative but it was just really fun to watch you guys just handle uh uh basically a day of cleaning and maintenance for your your reptile operation and uh yeah i learned a lot it was really fascinating to watch and it just shows that you guys are really committed to 
making that a success. So yeah, it's a uh, really, really neat to see. And then, like I said, I did not expect that, but I was very delighted that I, I was able to uh, share in that. You know, we were thrilled to get um, you down here. Hopefully we'll get some theistic callers today. I know that, uh, yeah. uh, Forrest and Forrest and Eve did the, the Sunday show earlier. I got to listen to that as we were driving back down here, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I, I shared out some links and hopefully there are some theists who are maybe skipping Sunday night service um, to be here and, and talk to us <laughs> about why we should believe, why they think they should believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the thing. Like that's, that's part of the reason why we are doing this show is because if, if theists do indeed have the truth, then we want to know because despite some of these stereotypes around skeptics and atheists, that we're hard-hearted, we just want to sin, we're resistant to the idea of God. Many of us are not. We really are genuinely interested in the truth. It's just we have a high evidentiary standard. We want to be confident in our knowledge claims. And so when we have discussions with theists, that's really all we're asking for, the same standards we would hold ourselves to for our beliefs. Um, so yeah, if anybody out there has a, a a theistic belief they want to um, put forward and uh, try to convince us of. We're going to ask some very, hopefully simple, honest questions to kind of get to the crux of why you believe and in, in the justifications for it and uh, hopefully have a good discussion around that. I also had um, somebody drop off um, uh, the, the rough equivalent of a chick tract, um, but this one's from Living Waters. So this is from Ray Comfort's mm -hmm. ministry. I went out, yep. we were at the Reptile Expo today, and, and to all the people who heard about the Reptile Expo and showed up and said hi, there were a number of fans that, that stopped in, people who, who've watched the various shows. Um, we loved getting to meet everybody and say hi. It was it was awesome. It's, and, and, and there were a couple of people who didn't even hear about it because they haven't watched in years, but you know they'd walk up and, oh, you know, hey, are you Matt? Well, I walked out to take care of some business, and while I was gone, somebody put that little atheist test flyer on our table they got it while Arden was busy so we didn't even see who did it and i was like man you that it's either an atheist just messing with me or it's a theist trying to get me to uh back to jesus or whatever but i'm gonna do a video about mm -hmm. it later it was just funny don't come back and find you know it's it'd be like the sort of thing you'd find underneath the windshield wiper of your car except this one was set yeah. right on our table at the expo <laughs> I wonder, yeah, it's curious whether it was just a, just a blind handout and they didn't realize who you were or they were like, oh, I know that person. I got just the message oh, to was, turn his was, heart to Jesus. Yeah, I don't think that there's any doubt that they knew who they were leaving it with. Yeah, uh, I have a similar story uh, briefly. Uh, back when I worked at Starbucks um, a long time ago when I was like 1920, um, uh, it was a quiet evening and me and my two coworkers were just there kind of shooting the shit waiting for the store to close. Um, all of a sudden, my manager looks out the drive through window and she suddenly frantically is trying to climb out the window without word. She's just, we're talking, she looks out the window and she's immediately trying to climb her way out the window. She finally gives up and runs for the front door. And we were like, wow, that's really weird. So I peek out the window and I see a $20 bill on the ground. Um, me being 19 year old Eric, you know, 160 pounds, super tall and slender. I'm out that window, no problem. And I grabbed the, the $20 bill just in time for her to come around the corner from the front door. And she chases me around the building. And I'm like, basically like, I got it. It's mine. Bye. We get inside. And guess what? It's a religious pamphlet oh, yeah. disguised to look yeah. like money. Uh, I got yeah, one in my a... wallet, but my wallet's downstairs. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, fun story. Um, okay. So let's, uh, let's hop into some calls here. So we have uh, a caller, uh, Sean, his, uh, pronouns i'm sorry uh their pronouns are they them from uh sw usa so southwest usa uh he is a i'm uh, sorry they are a theist the concept of secular sin and being excommunicated in a secular fashion sean welcome to the line and you're talking to matt and eric hey hey there <laughs> sean just for clarity it, it says you're a theist but it says you <laughs> It says you've called previously as an atheist, so mm. I want to make sure we're getting um, it right. I did, but I didn't make the call last time I called, so... Um, I just my sure theology... Listening. Yeah, my theology is a bit weird. It's not a Christian theology. It's more of just... It's just a spiritual theology. It's 
Um, my concept of God is more like a Hara Mazda than, um, than really the Christian concept of God, but it's not really a Hara Mazda. It's not, it's not directly Hara Mazda. Uh, it's just like, I'm the, not... it's like a, yeah, it's like a feeling though. So, so I'm not familiar with Hara Mazda. Mainly... Is, is this God a living thinking entity? Um, as far as I know, Zoroastrians believe that Hura Mazda is a living, thinking entity, but my spirituality can be, um, some days it's a, it's a living, thinking entity like the Holy Spirit. Some days it's, it's just a, it's just a feeling. It's just, just life. Um, all right. I, I know that that should be clarifying, but it's actually more confusing. How does something shift back and forth between being real and being a feeling? Or is this you sometimes think it's real and you sometimes think it's just a feeling? Uh, it's both. It's both um, actually switching back and forth between being real and being a feeling. Yeah, some and days you, I don't believe. It, sorry. Well, um, I, some what days, I'm asking is, uh, are, are you saying that you, some days you believe it's real and some days you believe it's a feeling? But I'm saying ontologically, is it actually like popping in and out of being real? No. Okay. So basically your assessment of this God changes day to day. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know a ton um, about Zoroastrianism, but, um, and, and I'm, I'm trying to understand it, but yeah, tell it, tell us, well, you wanted to talk about the concept of secular sin. So I'm, I'm trying to figure oh, out how that yeah. with your thing. <laughs> um, I'm an asshole and I committed, um, a great sin in of in like um a very secular nature a few several years ago and i was excommunicated from my small town because of it and it involves my ex-girlfriend i'm sorry you live somewhere in the united states and they they kicked you out of a town they banished you? Uh, they pretty much stopped talking to me as a normal person because of some bad drama I had with a specific woman I was dating. So they didn't kick you out of the town. They just stopped talking to you. They basically shunned you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... So you're, you're using the term secular sin here. So we're talking about sin in a non-religious sense. What, what is the definition of sin at this point? Because I, I look really? at the word sin exclusively. Go ahead. Um, I consider it like the original meaning, which means mistake. Um, and I committed some really bad mistakes. All right. Why don't you just call it a mistake? Why are you calling it a sin? Because sin brings in religious baggage with the term and just confuses the conversation. So your 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 topic here could potentially just be reworded. The concept of mistakes and being shunned uh, in a non-religious fashion, right? Um, somewhat. Okay. Um, I, like, I can kick that, but, um, I felt like they kind of use religion to justify their shunning. Well, if, 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 if the people doing the shunning are using religious reasons to not talk to you, then from their point of view, it's sin, right? But it's not secular sin. It's just sin in their eyes. So I, I'm, I'm a little confused here with the wording and why we're trying to force the term sin when we're just talking about, okay, let's, I'll just believe you. I won't ask for details. But let's say you just did a really shitty thing. And then a lot of people didn't want to talk to you anymore. 
And some of those people use religious reasoning behind that, probably saying, yeah, they sinned. So what, what is the question you're ultimately trying to ask us as atheists? Because we don't know any of those people. We can't read their minds. I don't know their justifications. I don't even know what you did or didn't do. What, what are you asking us about with this? Um, just the nature of all kind of laws function. Um, what law small towns are becoming? Um, what small towns are becoming? I'm sorry, I just I'm, still didn't get a question. I'm not sure what you're asking or what, what view you're yeah. trying to defend here. What happened with me and this woman is that we went out like for a few months, but she she considered like we were at college together and she considered that college, that holy temple, and I was just, I was just angry the semester before. Sean, and, you're telling yeah. us a story from your life where something went wrong, um, but this show is primarily about people defending particular beliefs, advocating for particular supernatural beliefs or God beliefs. We are not here in any way well i met her at church well, okay i really whether you met, whether, to church. whether or not you whether or not you met somebody at church is irrelevant to whether to what other interactions you had with them and whether that's relevant to whether or not a god exists i mean i once yeah. peed it in a church but that's not relevant to the god stuff So Sean, um, I'll ask again. Do, do you have a do you have a just a succinct question you want to ask us? It can be our opinion, it can be just about anything, but just put it in a in a question that we can easily understand and respond to. And if you don't have one, that's fine too. We can go ahead and move on to other calls and part ways. Um, like could be like similar fashion or ass or should I just focus like ask us whatever you want within reason just give us a question please um calling out drug use and spirituality and how it connects with the essence of what a lot of people a lot of Rastafarians and the, and the Native American and a lot of is used to connect with God, but a lot of church, other churches, um, they're opposed to drugs, such as the Mormon Church, and a I, lot of other churches. So, so uh, again, there's no question so there. I, I am think pro to... drug use, and I am pro using it for spiritual alignment, spiritual okay. connection. How can you tell, Sean? What do you mean? How, how are you defining spiritual? Well, it's not really, um, it's not technically a supernatural spirituality. It's more of a, it's more of a feeling, it's more of a, okay. So basically, of an energy if it's, and, if it's, if it's, if it's not supernatural, it's more of a feeling, then all you're really saying is you like to get high. Yeah. I don't need to take calls on people who like to get high. I'm you do you do whatever you want, Sean, is within reason that's you know legal, et cetera, but it has nothing to do with this show. Okay, I guess we'll leave it there, Sean. Have a good evening and uh call back later. Or don't. <laughs> we'll leave that up to uh, the people in charge of that. I'm not going to make the call. Uh, but thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. 
Stay safe. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next caller then. Uh, we have Richard, pronouns he, him, in, uh, what's NM? New Mexico. New Mexico, that's right. Uh, Richard is a theist. Uh, his topic is using Plato's theory of forms to prove that God exists. Hey, Richard, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Pretty myself. Not bad. Awesome. And by the way, can you hear me well? Because um, not only do I talk fast, but sometimes the line will go in and out. So I'm going to try to slow down and be very clear. Just let me know if you're you can hear clear. me well. No, you're uh, good. I, awesome. I, I, I wouldn't say loud and clear. It, it sounds a little bit wellish and weird, but it's fine. I can hear you. Oh, in that case, let me go ahead and uh, move around for just like 20 seconds. And if there's um, you guys, let me know if you want to keep the call on. But um, I'll just do some testing real quick. But um, yeah, so I'm glad to be talking to Matt. Um, so my my question, I guess, is is um, if there was a philosophy that just naturally and intuitively led to the plausibility of God's existence, just as a bonus, wouldn't you be compelled to believe in God if you accepted that philosophy, if it was true? I, I can't answer that question because I don't, I can't th imagine a model where belief is merely an intuition. Uh, I, I, I couldn't, except that it was just based on intuition we'd need you know some sort of evidence for it for sure by intuition i mean that human reason is compelled because the evidence is just that obvious that's what i mean by intuition okay if if yeah. human so, reason is compelled by evidence then yes i'm in favor but you you it says here that you're you're getting ready to use plato's theory of forms to to prove That's that God right. exists, which is an absolute misuse of the theory of forms because they they cannot and should not ever be used to demonstrate anything real. Well, they, first they, they I'd like to do ideals. Right. Ideals are the so so what do you think an ideal is if not the truly real versus the well, not as like, real? Plato so these things the ideals don't, ex they're not a part of space time. Sure. Why does that mean they're not real again? I don't know of anything that can be said to be real that isn't a part of space time. For sure. So what, but, but that doesn't answer the question of what makes something real. I, I just, I, what I'm saying is I'm not aware of anything that, that is, that, is, that I would consider real, that isn't a part of space-time. Do you have an example of something that I consider that's real, that's not a part of sure. space-time? Sure. Well, that you consider? I mean, if that were the case, I wouldn't have to convince you of anything. But um, I, I don't, I would like an answer so I can continue with the argument of what makes something real. Because if I provide a logical and consistent argument from Plato, and then you're like, that works perfectly, except forms aren't real because they're not in space-time, then we've gotten nowhere. So why, what is your premise for saying I, that only things in space-time are real? What's your premise for saying that? I am not aware of anything that I consider to be real that isn't a part of space-time. That doesn't answer the question of why are only things in space-time real? I didn't, what makes say them... only, I didn't say only things in space-time are real. I said that I'm only aware of things being considered real within space time and asked you to give an example of something other than something that we would consider real that's not a part of space time. Right, but what's your basis for that for that intuition? I'm asking I you. I don't know how many Richard, I don't know how many times I can say the same thing that I'm asking you. Do you have an example of something that is real that isn't a part of space time? You're making an a priori claim that I need justification. No, for, I'm not otherwise... making any claim, Richard. I'm literally asking you a question. Can a question be an a priori claim? The answer is no. Only if it's predicated on something unsubstantiated. Ask you yes. a question, Richard. Are you going to answer it, or are you going to keep pretending that I've made an a priori statement when all I did was ask a fucking question? 
Matt, if I ask you the question, are unicorns brown or blue, and you say, why do we believe unicorns exist, you're allowed to say that in response to my bad question. So I'm asking you, what's the premise for your question? That's all I need to know to contend you. That's how, my question is, do you know anything that is real that is not part of space-time? Give me an example. For sure, the forms. The forms are not real. Because they're not as far as space time, which is why you entrapped yourself in a circle. So I want you to release I didn't yourself entrap in that circle. I didn't entrap myself in a cir circle at all. I asked you to give an example. You I have, have not have made. No I have not made. Question. No, hang on. I have not made any assertion of any position at all. So how could I trap myself in a circle when I haven't given any position at all? All I'm saying is I'm not aware of anything that is real that is not a part of space-time. Abstractions, thoughts, Matt, ideals, those things are not part of space-time. If I ask you a question with a premise, we need justification for that premise, true or false? If you ask me a question with a premise, we need justification for that premise, true or false? I don't know. Okay, now I'm not sure what that does for the conversation, but I could just I don't make the either, argument because if you want. I, you're never going to be able to come in and use Plato's forms to suggest that a God is real if the forms themselves from Plato are also not to be considered real. They, they exist. Why? I think you're poisoning the well here. I think you're poisoning the well here because no, why? I, I, and I I'm not. I, are you going to answer my question or not? Wait, what was the question? I thought I did answer it. You, you gave when I asked, "Is there something that's real that's not a part of space time?" You said the forms, but I reject that. Why do you reject it? Because I don't have any reason to believe that they're real. They are ideals. They are abstractions. They are thoughts. They are goals. They have always been presented that way. There's no such thing as a perfect circle, as far as we know. If you know of a perfect circle, present it. How about the information that makes circularity possible? That would be I the don't perfect circle. That, Plato, right, that is Plato not a addresses perfect, this. No, 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 no. The information that makes, uh, wow. That's, so the perfect circle is about a form. It's not about a structure of an argument. What does that mean? Are, are, are you muted? With, no, you am, just am suggested you, you suggested that that a statement is a perfect circle, but that's not what the definition of a perfect circle is. The perfect circle being this form that has 360 degrees and zero, you know, a line with no width type thing. That's why they are the, uh, the abstractions, the ideals. And you pointed out that it's some metaphorical perfect circle. So information is not a metaphor. Information is the reason why you have a screen on your laptop. That's just as real as the actual image. But if you have a code, we wouldn't say that the code is fake. We would say that there's different ways of communicating the information of that code. But just because the, the way of communicating is human made, we wouldn't say that the information of the code itself is just non-existent. Otherwise, it wouldn't have any causal effects on reality. It's the same with circles and shapes. Yeah, everything you just said is absolutely useless and presented nothing of any substance at all. At least I answered the question, Matt. Are you actually going to answer mine? What's your premise for this argument? Premise for what argument? I haven't made an argument, nor have I presented a position. You said you were going to use Plato's theory of forms to prove that God exists. How can you prove that? use the, the forms, which are abstractions and don't exist in reality, to show that something exists in reality? I already did that, but I'm just hoping that you break yourself no, out of this circle where only, only spatial I'm not, I'm things are I'm in reading. a circle, well, and you, if you think you already proved that God exists, then we don't need to continue to talk. For sure. I just want everybody watching the comments to clip this part and actually draw the circle of Matt's logic that he created for himself and that he refuses to break out of. Like, we have the receipts please, right here. Please, just everybody go draw the circle of Matt's logic that he used for himself when I presented no case. Goodbye, Richard. You are a waste of time. Have a good night. Bye. Goodbye, Richard. I was going to say...
far clear of that one because I'm not a philosopher and I don't have anything to say about theory of forms from Plato. So, all right, let's go ahead and proceed to uh, Danny. She and her in Idaho. Uh, Danny's an atheist. Would neurodivergence tend to make a person more skeptical than not? Hey, Danny, how you doing? Oh, uh, well, I'm kind of nervous, actually. <laughs> how are you guys? We're doing pretty good. Doing all right. <laughs> yeah, um, and don't so, be nervous. We're we're we're, we're harm. We're mostly harmless, so don't be nervous at all. <laughs> I don't know. I've been watching Matt for a long time. <laughs> um. So very succinctly, um, I'm schizophrenic. I have been schizophrenic since my earliest childhood memories, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in a Catholic upbringing, I was taught that things like that could be demonic possession and so on and so forth. Um, as, as I was old enough to like start thinking about what the church actually taught, I started to question um, is this really what this is? Like, is what's happening to me, is it real? And I, I kind of had to, because I didn't want to tell anybody what was wrong with me or what I was seeing and experiencing. So I kind of forced myself to question everything about my life. And so I was kind of wondering, would, would a neurodivergent disorder, I, I don't know if schizophrenia fault, falls under neurodivergent, but would that yeah. kind of predispose somebody to being more skeptical? I think the only answer that we can really give is that, um, as far as I can tell, neither myself nor Eric is qualified to truly say <laughs> what the answer to this question is, but I, I can tell you what my suspicion is, and that is that, uh, much like anything, there are certain neurodivergent conditions that may make someone more skeptical, especially if, if they're less prone to rationalizing, less prone to emotional appeals. Um, mm -hmm. it, it could make someone slightly better or even significantly better at, at using the tools of skepticism. And, you know, if, if, if there's some sorts of propaganda and logical fallacies that you're not prone to fall into. The problem is that I think there are also some neurodivergent conditions that might make you more susceptible to certain right. fallacious appeals. And so much like anything, uh, I, I understand the feeling and having been active in the atheist and in, in, in the broader secular community for nearly two decades, um, part of me is like, oh yeah, yeah, we run across way more neurodivergent people than average. But I think I'm wrong in that. I I, I think that you're going to find people who are neurodivergent in all walks of life with all kinds of beliefs. And some of them are going to be better at applying skepticism and some of them are going to be worse. So despite the suspicion and the fact that I kind of share the suspicion, I, I don't know that there's any way to say. Mm, I wish somebody and, would do a study on this. <laughs> yeah. My, my two cents on that is if you, if you compare two, brains one which is prone to schizophrenic episodes and one which isn't it's probably safe to say that the probability of the schizophrenic brain hearing voices that aren't there is higher than the one that doesn't have schizophrenia and if the person who possesses that brain that mind understands that which sounds like in your case you do have a, a self-awareness of your condition and you understand that yes i have this condition i'm neurodivergent that increases the probability of me hearing voices that aren't there or whatever other effects that you're under if you appreciate that and you understand that, then that is going to raise your skepticism when you are considering thoughts you're having in your mind and uh, whether or not those are actually coming from real people or not. So I don't know necessarily, I don't, I don't agree that it comes from the neurodivergence itself. I think it comes from the fact that you are lucky enough to um, be self-aware enough and be aware, uh, uh, have an understanding of the condition and the, and the boat you're in. And you take appropriate steps to compensate for that. So it doesn't come from the disorder itself. It comes from you understanding the condition of the boat you're in and you're, you're, you're being careful about that. Now, yeah, whether that's the case for everybody, whether that's the case for everybody, I don't know. You can imagine a, a, a schizophrenic who does not appreciate that fact. And they may oh, and think that, well, several. maybe, yeah. And they may say, well, I'm tapped into special knowledge. The universe, God is talking to me. And then their, their skepticism drops down to the floor. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know. Like Matt said, we're not, 
experts on this. We can only speculate as to what's going on and kind of what's causing it. Uh, you may want to talk mm -hmm. to uh, Shannon Q. Um, she has more formal education in on this subject, and she can maybe talk to you on a more intelligent level than either Matt or I can. Uh, Shannon's a co-host on this show, and she's here every once in a while. I'm not sure when the next day she'll be here. I don't see her on the schedule yet, but keep an eye out for her. And oh, she also runs her own stream every once in a while, too. So if you ever see her online, you can... Uh, okay. or streaming and give her a call and, and talk to her about this. Okay. Yeah. I just remember like uh, being a young child, you, you know, seven, eight, nine, um, and being in church and then, uh, you know, teaching basically that like the things that I was seeing and experiencing were the influence of the devil. And I thought like, it didn't make sense to me and so i i wanted like i i remember being about eight or nine years old and wanting wanting there to be an angel on my side and and like really trying to figure out how to push the quote-unquote demons away to get an angel to talk to me and mm. um and and then around 11 or 12 um I started like, okay, so, so they're only saying bad things. So why isn't God listening to me? And, um, my dad passed away at 12 and I, I kind of, I, I didn't take it well. And I had a attempt at suicide and was subsequently hospitalized. And that's when I started talking to people about what was, going on. I didn't actually get a diagnosis of schizophrenia until several years later. Um, mm -hmm. because I was, I was still kind of under this, I didn't really believe in the Catholic teachings, but I was still not sure enough of myself to say it wasn't demons, you know? And so it, it was just as, as my brain kind of matured, I was like, this, this can't be what they're telling me it is. And so yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty rough, but, um, I developed ways and, and a lot of people still tell me I'm strange, but they're like, cause like I said, I'm skeptical about everything and I am receiving treatment. And I am medicated. So it's much easier now. Um, but I had to develop ways like, are the people around me experiencing what I'm experiencing? Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, very it was difficult. pretty rough, so. It, it, it's difficult. It's, it's already hard enough if you're not struggling with any sort of neurodivergent stuff. Dealing with philosophical issues like, oh, the problem of hard solipsism or whatever else. You know, how do I know that what I'm oh. seeing and interacting with is reliable? How do I, what's the best ways for, for me to evaluate evidence to see which beliefs are reasonable? And then we rely on, um, since we can't solve the problem of heart solicism, we rely on this uh, evaluation by others that, you know, reality are the things that don't go away when you stop believing in them. And the reality, that, the reality of the, is the thing that, that Eric and I are both seeing and experiencing and able to, you know, verify for each other. And then you have to call into question when you have certain strong forms of schizophrenia and other things, does Eric even exist as is a person that I'm using to say, Hey, did you see that? <laughs> maybe they're uh, there. Maybe they're a delusion as well Is I mean, that's a little bit of, uh, of what we saw in a, in the, a beautiful mind film. Uh, yeah, I was about I, to mention that. Oh, no, 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 please, no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> but I, I can't, what My I can't do is I can't. gets compared, I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, I can't say, uh, there's not necessarily a solution to this since I'm just empathizing that it's, I can see how it can be incredibly difficult um, with some conditions um, where you're stuck mm -hmm. basically questioning every aspect of reality and that's going to hinder any progress towards coming to grips with what you're actually experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt earlier. It's just uh, my oh, situation has been compared to that movie more times than I care to count. And it's like, you know, it's not really the same. 
I mean, I guess you could draw parallels, but it. Yeah, we weren't. Uh, we I weren't feel making. Like Hollywood we, we, we really romanticized it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we weren't saying we weren't saying that that's, that's we weren't saying that's necessarily uh, representative of your case. Uh, Matt and I don't suffer from these conditions, so we have a harder time understanding it than one who does. So we do our best to draw comparisons to things we were presented before. We acknowledge that those things are inaccurate. Hollywood definitely doesn't present things in the most accurate light. Um, that was not in any way us diagnosing or saying you're like this. We're just simply saying from our point of view, we're trying to draw these comparisons. So we apologize if, if that was in some way triggering or you didn't appreciate that comment. We're just doing the best oh, we okay, can to understand and map this in our reality. <laughs> Yeah, but I do want to say it's, it's I do want to say like, that no, my my life's not a movie. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, we were we were absolutely not saying that. Yeah, so um, apologies if it came across that way. Uh, I do want to say though that um, Matt mentioned earlier that coming to skepticism and atheism, especially in our world where we have religion dominating discussions, we have uh, a, a long history of of mental and uh, uh, mind disorders being misdiagnosed as demon possessions, spirits running amok, things like that. Um, it's hard enough for people without neurodivergency to come get past all that noise and all that that mud and get to a spot of saying, well, we don't really have an idea of where these things come from, or at least we don't, we don't, we can't attribute it to these supernatural forces without some type of justification. It's hard enough for non-neurodivergent people to do that. But the fact that you were able to do this on your own, despite the additional hurdles put in front of you, says a lot about uh, your strength and also your um, your commitment to being intellectually honest with yourself and and keeping uh, 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 intellectual integrity uh, as you try to figure out the world. So in a sense, you are stronger than both me and Matt because you've overcome more hurdles to get to where you are now than he and I have. So I think that's to be commended. Uh uh, I, I appreciate that. I'm not very good at taking compliments, <laughs> um, but I do Fair appreciate <laughs> that. It was, it, was, it, it was one of those things after my dad passed, my mom fell really hard into like just trying to find some way to be with my dad again. And she kind of pushed that. And, and it was at a time where, you know, my brain is starting to develop more. And I'm like, this isn't this. It started out for me. It started out as I have, I guess, kind of a rebellious nature because I'm every Sunday, you know, worship God, bang, you know, bow down to God, God this and God that. I'm like, why? Why should I? And which led me to um, really question what reality was. And it was at a time when I was, I was able to start. Um, researching on my own uh, what was happening to me without having to tell anyone what was happening to me. So um, it, it just, it, it's become I, like a second nature to me. Just why, why this, why that, like, why, why should I believe this over that? And so it, it's sometimes I worry it's almost made me too skeptical. <laughs> well the, in the colloquial sense of course being too skeptical is, is roughly just being cynical um, in in the more strict sense you can't be too skeptical you skepticism is merely reserving belief until it's warranted you can be wrong about when it's warranted, but yes, I get what you mean. I, right. I don't. I don't mean be overly <laughs> pedantic on on the thing, because I I get that most people are like, oh, well, I don't want to be that skeptical, or maybe I'm being too skeptical. And in reality, what's happening is you've stopped being skeptical and are starting to be cynical, of uh, mm -hmm. or, or conspiratorial. You know, in in that sense of you've you've when we, we're really good at drawing connections between things. We're so good at it that we get to be bad at it uh, in the sense that we'll start drawing connections where they're undeserved. And that's, I feel like that's kind of what happened to me in my late teens um, before I uh, got my actual diagnosis with, with what was really going on. Um, and it was, it, it was, like you said, like I was cynical and it, it was almost um kind of like locking myself inside a shell, if that makes sense. Um, 
if if you can't get to me, you can't hurt me or or make me hurt myself almost. So yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to explain. I know. <laughs> um, now that I I've been steady on on medication and in therapy for years, and I feel like I'm in a good place with that. So it's like. Um, I almost came out of this like uh, what you what you could call a misanthropic state, to where it's not a negative skepticism. I get I'd call it a negative skepticism, and it's like because I would assume the worst to protect myself. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I know if I, I I thought that maybe. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I don't know if I I fully grasped that, but. Um, I, I can, I can definitely get the, understand the frustration. Well, it, it's it basically made, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask a question. Is it basically, you feel like you could potentially build such a skeptical shell around yourself to protect yourself from, uh, any voices that aren't there, any experiences that aren't there. And you're afraid that you are going to build such a shell that you're going to block out the real ones as well is, and that's what you're worried about. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I can, also I have another condition that it kind of causes aphasia. So sometimes I have difficulty choosing the right words. I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. Right. No, 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 no. I mean, I, we're, we're, we're both, we're both working to understand each other because we're, we're both kind of in <laughs> two different mindsets. I mean, quite literally too, because, you know, uh, I, as far as I know, I'm not neurodivergent in any measurable way. Um, but, yeah, I can. I, mean, I can understand the the almost like paranoia that you could potentially develop if you lived an entire life having to question every single voice you hear, whether it's really there or not. I can imagine a, a certain level of paranoia building up to a point where you probably feel like you can't function anymore, or you are afraid that you're actually blocking out people who are actually trying to help you. Um, yeah, I mean, I I can't give you any advice on exactly what to do there, but I can imagine what the problem must be like. Um, but it sounds like you already have a good handle on things because you said you're 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 going to therapy, you are medicating on it. It sounds like you probably have hopefully a support structure around you that can help you every once in a while when you have, you know, uh, uh, may, maybe elevated doubts or elevated uh, cynicism. Um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds and, like and you're, you're already like well. Some, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Um, I I do have what what are called like breakthrough symptoms. Like sometimes. I'll hear something and then I turn around, but I don't see anyone and um, kind of shameless plug to my service dog. Um, Cause I don't think that people know that psychiatric service dogs are a thing, but that has also really helped <laughs> uh, because nice. if he's calm and chill, I know that I'm safe. So, um, but, but I'll get breakthrough symptoms. And, and so when that happens, I just, um, I go to my journal and I'm like, okay, well, this is what I know for sure. And then yeah. I can build back from there. So um, I just, uh, I, I just kind of wanted to encourage people to, like I did, think skeptically and communicate is, communication is so important and which kind of leads me to thank you guys for doing what you do because it's helped me more than I can say. Awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Well, thanks for saying so, Danny. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Thank and you. Like, uh, I won't take up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Let you let you wrap up. Oh, I I was just gonna I was just gonna say I didn't want to take any more time because I'm sure there's probably CS callers now, and those are my favorite ones. Well, so we'll just, do our best. I really to, appreciate uh, you guys taking my call <clears throat> to get them in here. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, guys. You have a good night. Thanks, you too. You too. Best of luck. And uh, yeah, thank you for calling and giving us an insight. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate that. Bye. All right. So we have a few more callers lined up here. Um, let's uh, kind of go back to announcements and uh, talk about what's going on. So earlier I mentioned that we have a Patreon at, or Patreon at patreon.com slash call the line. Uh, we currently have 697 members. And our goal is to hit 1,000 members at some point in the future. And as a reward, once we hit 1,000 members, uh, we're going to be adding a bad Christian movie review series starring Matt and Jimmy, 
watching God's Not Dead for the introductory episode. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, Matt. <laughs> the things you do for I mean, on the one hand, <laughs> I want us to get and build up our number of patrons and all that stuff. On the other hand, I've already watched God's Not Dead uh, multiple yeah, times. So my, my ex-wife had a... Uh, so Beth, when people would come over from the atheist community, and there were people frequently stayed at our house and stuff like that, she would often ask them, hey, have you seen God's Not Dead? And if they <laughs> said no, she would make them watch it. It was like it was a Mystery Science Theater 3000 thing where she was just like, oh, so I've seen God's Not Dead uh, probably five or six times. So watching it again is going to be... Oh, 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 so painful, but I, I will do it for, I will do it for the fans. Yeah. Yeah. So Matt, Matt is sacrificing quite a lot for us folks. So, uh, become a patron and make it happen faster. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that that would be probably difficult to watch that movie over and over and over again. Cause I mean, it, it B movies are great. Uh, bad movies are even better. Um, but that, that God knows dead film is just, it's just, it's, it's just in this weird, corner of cringe and not really being funny and it's it's an it's an academic exercise to pick it apart and it's already been picked apart so many times i think like zod did prophet zod did an episode on it uh, i think Apologia did some stuff on it and also caught on gosna dead two and three and i think they have a fourth one now um so yeah it's a it's a fun exercise but yeah i can imagine after so many times yeah i don't you're, you're a stronger man than i let's put it that way <laughs> On, and I, on a related front, um, for anybody who cares, the candidates tournament is over and Gukesh D has won and will be facing Ding Liren for the world championship, uh, world chess championship. Uh, Very which, cool. And he may turn out to be, if he wins, he'll be the youngest chess world champion in history, which is they wow. played an audio clip of him when he was a kid saying, Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he's like, I want to be the youngest world chess champion. And he may well do it. He's 17. Wow. Yeah. When's uh when's that final game going to be then that the, the final championship, uh, set I don't games, know when, when the, the championship match yeah. is, is going to be, I mean, the, the, the yeah. candidates just finished like while we were live. Oh, okay. So sounds good. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Uh, and then the last bit of the patron announcements here. Uh, and so that's the, that is when we had 1000 subscribers, the, uh, bad Christian movie review. Uh, when we hit 2000 subscribers, we will start an interactive dungeons and dragons campaign live YouTube series where every atheist has to choose a God to serve. So every atheist oh must be God. a theist in this fantasy world. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, man, my last D and D campaign uh i forgot what god i was aligned to but um i was a necromancer and i was on a personal quest to get one member of every royal family under my control so basically whenever i entered a, a, a kingdom I, first thing i would ask to uh, anybody would be where's the royal graveyard because <laughs> i got some shopping to do <laughs> so all right all right let's move on to another caller uh we have let's take a look here we have two theists and two atheists on the line. Uh, we will e talk to the theist that has been waiting the longest, which is David, pronouns he, him, uh, from California. His question is, why do atheists think ignorance is the metric for determining true things? Hey, David, welcome to the line. Hey, how's it going? Doing pretty good. So your question All is, right. uh, why do atheists why do atheists think ignorance is the metric for determining true things? Is that an accurate representation representation of your question, or do you want to rephrase it at all? No, yeah, that's pretty much the basis of your claim. What claim is that? What, what claim? Well, the claim is that somehow because you don't know history and you don't know science somehow that gives you the power to determine whether Jesus died on the cross or whether the Bible is true. I mean, you don't know anything. Are, are you, uh, nothing are you, you said is remotely our position, nor does it follow from what you said? It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's genuinely bizarre 
because first of all, we're atheists, which means we're not convinced that a God exists, which doesn't mean we've concluded anything at all about Jesus. But when you say that we're, because we're ignorant of history or science or whatever else, uh, that's not the reason I'm an atheist, no matter how ignorant I may or may not be. It's because the people who are claiming that a God exists have failed to meet a burden of proof. Yeah, David, well, are I've, you, I've are you, are you referencing, David, are you referencing whenever we say, oh, that's an argument from ignorance or that's an argu argument from incredulity? Are you referencing whenever we bring that up as an objection to an atheist or a, a theist argument? No, well, I've talked to Matt numerous times and and uh, other atheists on atheist experience, and somehow they claim that somehow I'm not qualified because they're not qualified. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like, how do you I determine no whether idea. I'm qualified? I have no idea what you're talking about or what you're talking about qualifications, and uh, we're not responsible for anything that's said on the atheist experience. So instead of either whining no, or- No, I'm talking about all in, atheist channels. Of, I, I, okay, I'm not responsible for all atheist channels, so just deal with the two of us here right now and make your case for God. Are you ex responsible for yourself? Yes. Okay, well, you've banned me from your show. So, uh, oh, then how are you fucking calling in? Because I was banned from a different show. I'm not banned from this show. Then you're not banned from this show. Did you just call into wine or are you going to make a case for something? Because you're really close to getting banned from this show and you haven't even done anything substantive yet. Well, I'm trying to get an idea of how you determine what true things are because you somehow seem to think that because if, if somebody cannot provide you with evidence or somehow uh, you can over, uh, you know, rule them with enough questions and, and uh, hyperbole that somehow that that's a metric for determining whether anything is true. No, I need to be convinced yeah. every claim comes with a burden of proof you have to meet that burden of proof before I can become convinced. Until you meet that burden of proof, I remain unconvinced. That is not the same as me being convinced that your claim is false. If you want to come in and say God exists, you have to present the case such that we then become convinced that God exists. If you fail to make the case, that doesn't mean we're convinced God doesn't exist. It just means you failed to convince us that God exists. Are you going to attempt to no, convince no, us no, that no. A God exists? What do you mean? No, 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 no. Everything I said is everything I just no. said is one hundred percent correct. You can say no as much no. as you want. No, because yes. you don't understand the evidence doesn't mean yes. that there is yes. no evidence. No, 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 no. Whether or not I understand it is irrelevant. I'm telling you what it takes to convince us. Are you going to do that or are you not? I provided you with the evidence, but if you when? fail to understand the evidence, when, 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 uh, right now. What evidence? What evidence so, did you provide right now, you liar? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to provide some evidence right now if you'll let me talk. Oh no, no, so no, no. Hang on, David. You said you provided past tense evidence, and when I said when, you said now. So that means that you should have already provided no. evidence. Are you going yes, to provide I evidence numerous now? Numerous times I provided evidence. Numerous what? times I provided what? evidence, and then David. you, then David. you. Now David, you made a David, claim. No, David, no. David, a David, shut the fuck up when I say when, and now you're saying numerous times. Are you going to do it today? Because that's all I give a fuck about. Are you going to let me talk? No, actually, I'm not going to let you talk. I didn't think so, Matt. You don't want... Uh, I muted you, David. I'm going to talk a little bit instead. So, David... Just to be clear, whenever somebody calls up with a claim to one of these shows, we ask, what's the evidence? What's the argumentation? When the evidence falls short and or the argumentation falls short, we can say things like, oh, there's a fallacy baked into that, or oh, the evidence isn't there, or oh, that's a bad, invalid argument. That's us not, that's, that is not us declaring the claim false. We are not saying, oh, you use the argument from ignorance, therefore your claim is false. That's not that what we're saying. We're, that would be the fallacy fallacy. We're saying you have not convinced us, and we do not think that you have proper justification either. 
we are unconvinced of the truthness, the truthiness or the falsiness of the claim. You have not established either. And we can't make a judgment on that because we don't have the proper argumentation or the evidence. So we are not declaring claims false, usually. We're simply saying it's undetermined. Now, if we can identify a contradiction in the argument, then we could perhaps say it's false. But until we have that something more stronger than that, we just are simply neutral on the truth or falseness of the claim. Yeah, so well, with that, with with, are, with that, with that sorted, with that sorted, can you give us a claim for your God or your theism, and back it up with some argumentation or evidence? Yeah, I, I can give you the evidence, but you aren't qualified to judge the evidence. That's the problem. Oh my fucking God! So, listen to you. No, no, stop, David. Listen, listen to you. You pretend that we don't want the evidence, and then when we tell you that we do, then you start down this, I'll tell it, but you're not qualified to assess it. I didn't give a shit or ask you if I was qualified. If I'm not qualified, don't spend any time talking to me. But if we ask you for evidence, don't pretend that we're not willing to listen if you're the one that's refusing to actually give it, you liar. I'm imagining missionaries going to Africa or some uncontacted tribe and saying, these are our claims. And they say, okay, what evidence do you have? Oh, sorry, you're not qualified to evaluate that evidence. Just believe us. Yeah. Do, do you, do you yeah, see how the silly are, that what sounds? Qualifications? What qualifications yeah, do but, we need? What qualifications yeah, do we but, need, David? David, what qualifications we, do we need? Well, you don't know jack shit about science. That's what you need to know. David, you don't know anything. Dude, David, I do know jack shit about science, but what qualifications no, do don't. I need? Answer my fucking question, David. What qualifications do I fucking need to assess the fucking evidence that you're refusing to fucking give me? Are you a cosmologist? No. Okay, then it, you aren't it, qualified. It, it, okay, then why the are, fuck did you, you call me, dumbass? David, you are you a cosmologist? You but you aren't qualified. David, are you a cosmologist? I don't give a shit if you think I'm qualified or not. Why did you bother to call me if you don't think I'm qualified? Because here's I just question, wanted to here's demonstrate a question that for you're you. not qualified. Here's a question for you, David. Are only cosmologists qualified to assess the evidence that you have for God? No. I don't then I, what I difference does it fucking make? What difference does it make if I'm not a cosmologist? I, that was the only question you asked me, and you said I wasn't qualified. So if if it's not merely cosmologists who are qualified, why did you disqualify me when I said I wasn't a cosmologist? Because that's my evidence. I'm, I'm talking about cosmology right now. I'm talking about David, the, the original. David, are you a cosmologist? David, are you a cosmologist? Nope. Fuck off. No, you. No, you're going Bye. to fuck off right now. I'm going to have you fuck off right now <laughs> because <laughs> you disqualified hey. me because I'm not a, a cosmologist. You're not a cosmologist either. And then you stupidly acknowledged that it's that whether or not you're a cosmologist isn't the criteria for whether or not you're qualified to do it. You're an idiot, David. I don't need to talk to you. No, no. You're no, an no, idiot. Because you told me. No, no, no. You told me I was not. No, no, no. I'm muting you. You are an idiot. You just contradicted yourself. You just tried to disqualify me, but I'll also bet that I know more about cosmology than you do, despite the fact that neither of us is a, is a cosmologist, and despite the fact that you yourself have said it's not relevant. I no longer ever need to hear from you again, David, ever. I'm going to keep sitting here and talking until you hang up. I do like how uh, being presented with cosmology evidence requires you to be a cosmologist but being the actual presenter of such evidence does not require that that's it's absolutely quite bizarre. fascinating to me yeah uh, are you a cosmologist no then you're not qualified cool are only cosmologists qualified no are you a cosmologist no see, you are so see, david, fucking this, confused david it's embarrassing yeah this this tells us david you're not coming to us in good faith because we just we just explained to you we just responded to your question very very Clearly, I believe. Why do atheists think ignorance is the metric for determining through thing, true things? We don't. We explain that to you. And then we said, okay, now that we're past this, let's go into an argument, a claim, and some evidence. And now you're just flat out refusing to give evidence because we don't meet your qualifications, the same qualifications you don't meet. So I, I'm 
super confused here as to how anything can get off the ground if the person with the claim refuses to present the evidence because there's some arbitrary requirement that the listener is not hearing, the same requirement that the giver of the evidence does not also meet. No, I don't, I don't refuse to give the evidence. I've given it numerous times. You just literally you, did. You tell me, you t no, you turn around right. and tell me I'm not qualified when David. you guys don't have any qualified. All right. So, David, I, I just muted you. Okay, you just, you just admitted that you don't refuse to give the evidence. So, great. Please, David, give us the evidence. Yeah. M Matt makes the claim, and, and you guys make the claim that somehow science is Please the best method of determining true things. I am Please giving give you the evidence. evidence if you'll be quiet. Huh. Okay, so... I'll be quiet. Quiet. I'll be quiet when hell freezes over, David. Would you like yeah, to I know. would you like to would you like to stop being a prick? No. Then why should we why should we listen to you? I'm going to I'm going to bow out of this. Because I'm going to bow out of this. That's just who Shut I am. up. Shut up. I don't give a shit who you are. I'm going to bow out of this because I want Eric to be able to just <laughs> absolutely engage with you and whatever Eric wants to. But I'm going to play chess. So just know David that if you called to get to me, you're done. Go ahead, Eric. No, I didn't right, call David. to get to you. I called to present the evidence. Okay, then present the evidence, please. Let's go. Okay, what, the evidence. What is the claim? The is the claim? The sorry, sorry, David, before you give the evidence, though, what is the claim? And then you can go in the evidence. The claim is that science proves that the foundations of the cosmos are supernatural. That's the science, claim. Science proves that the foundations of the cosmos are supernatural. Are you right. aware? Are you aware that science only investigates the natural? So how does the science no, prove? Not, no, no. Science is a study of the natural world, right? Unless you're operating under some other definition of science that I'm unaware yes. of. Yes, okay. but that doesn't mean that science cannot prove the supernatural just because it proves the physical world. Well, science doesn't prove physics determines, anything. Wait a minute. Physics, okay. physics determines what can occur naturally. So if, it, if something occurs that does, cannot occur naturally, that's supernatural. No, that's a fallacy. No. no, it isn't. It is a fallacy. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You have to yes, prove it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So no. if you say, yes, if you say that if you can't show that something is natural, it is supernatural, that is a fallacy. Because no, that, when I say yes, that something is yes, say no one more fucking time while I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm, you laugh all you forgive want. Me, uh, you laugh all you me. want. You're the, you laugh all no, you want. You're the me. one that's engaged. Forget, you're the one that's engaged in a fallacy. Hey, here, how about I put you back on mute? Okay, just because you cannot show that something is natural, that does not mean that it's supernatural because you don't have exhaustive knowledge of everything, which is what would be required. That's why it's a fallacy. There you go. Continue. No, no, you, you, you misunderstand science. If, if you don't understand physics, why are you going to debate This isn't science, it's logic. This isn't science, it's logic. No, no, logic can you talk logic. about How the fuck can you talk about lo physics when we weren't talking about physics? We were talking about logic. Yes, we were. No, we weren't. No, we're not talking about logic. I'm talking physics, about fallacy. Physics, you don't. It, there's not, there's not fallacies in physics, change. dumbass. There's not fall fallacies in physics. I know. That's why I determined that physics determines things, and you won't listen to it. I'm happy to listen to physics. I'm pointing out what a logical fallacy is. If you assert that because you because we don't know that something is natural, therefore it it is in fact supernatural, that is a fallacious argument. No, it isn't. Fallacies have nothing to do with it, physics, as you stated clearly. Oh my fucking god! You're not mm -hmm. you're not using physics. You're making an argument, dumbass. Yes, I am. And an no, argument can physics. be fallacious, and your argument is fallacious. No. Physics determines yes. what can occur next. Okay, I'm going to mute you again. I'm going to ask you a single question. And whether or not you get it right determines whether or not you will ever be able to talk again. This is really simple. If you cannot prove that someone is guilty of a crime, 
Does that mean that they are innocent? Yes or no? No, this guy, not, I'm not talking about crime. Yes, so no. yes or no? Physics. David, if you cannot prove that someone is guilty of a crime, does that mean that they are in fact to do innocent? With it. David, you dumbass. It. It's yes, it no, does. It's no, logic. No, no, it's no. an abstraction. I, I swear, if you don't answer this, I'm going to ban you from the show. I'm, I swear, if you you're don't answer wrong, this, you're going to ban. 99% of the time, Matt. Goodbye, you're banned. Block his fucking number. Go away, Man. you delusional person. If you have a painting in front of you, and you're trying to determine whether that painting is a Van Gogh or not. And you study it and you look at it and you say to yourself, we have no way currently to determine whether this is a Van Gogh. Does that automatically make it not a Van Gogh? No. The, the assessment of the painting is undetermined. You withhold judgment. David, so when you say that, oh, somehow if science can investigate and confirm the supernatural in some world where that's possible, or we redefine science to actually mean that, if science is investigating something, and science can't determine it's natural, that does not automatically make it not natural. That's the whole point we we're trying to make there. So we can use courtroom analogies, we can use the painting, we can talk about physics and science. David can't think in the abstract or in analogies, which is part of the problem. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 it's physics, but you're making an argument. If you make an argument- problem is- if yeah, that, Now we're it, talking about logic. Yeah. What, if, you're, if the premises of your argument are based in physics, that determines whether or not the physics determines whether or not we should accept the premise. But if the argument is invalid in structure or, you know, it, it, the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises, then your argument is flawed, even if the physics are correct. That's why the physics don't matter. Yeah. If you can't get the argument together, and if you got, can't even identify it. a basic fallacy that not being able to demonstrate X means it's not X, that's not true. Mm -hmm. you, you just, the fact that you haven't been able to demonstrate it means you haven't been able to demonstrate it. Just like, uh, I, I, if I can't prove to you that OJ was guilty, that doesn't mean he was innocent. Got, got to admire the, the ballsiness of saying, oh, you banned me before, but I circumvented your ban, and here I am. Got to, yeah. got, to, got to admit, that's a little ballsy there. So, but anyway, you were banned. Exactly so. <laughs> I figured out exactly why. Good luck. figured out exactly why he's banned. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our next theist caller. We have John, no pronouns given, uh, in Ohio. John is a theist. Uh, his statement is, God can be proven through creation and through records. So, John, you're on the air. I'm sorry, hold on. I misclicked. Try that one more time. Hey, John, oh. welcome. Hey, how are you tonight? I'm having fun. Holding on. Yeah, I don't know about Matt, but I'm having fun. <laughs> uh, is it possible to ever convince either one of you two that uh, God exists? I is it possible? I, I don't know. I'll believe anything for which there's sufficient evidence. Yeah. I, I don't know about every single argument and piece of evidence out there. So, I mean, theoretically, there is, a piece of there is an argument and evidence that would convince me. I, I say constantly that the reason I don't believe in a God is because I've yet to be presented with compelling evidence. So if you present me with some evidence that's compelling, I will be compelled to believe. Well, I think that uh, God can be proven through circumstantial evidence. Do you believe in circumstantial evidence? Do I believe in circumstantial evidence? I, I don't even know how to answer that. I believe we have a concept of circumstantial evidence, which we use in courts, and circumstantial evidence tends to be less reliable and trusted than that, than uh, direct evidence in, in judgments. So I'll play along. Sure, I believe in circumstantial evidence. But, uh, a, but a jury can be convicted or convinced by circumstantial evidence. Isn't that correct? A jury can be convinced of with circumstantial convinced. evidence, sure. But jury that doesn't necessarily lots of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that the jury is is being accurate in its assessment of the guilt or non-guilt of the, the defendant. 
Okay, but they're going by the best uh, evidence that they have, correct? In most no, cases, sure. Just yeah, why not? Because, just because something may be the best evidence you have doesn't mean that it should be considered sufficient for belief. Well, the, the jury would base their decision on, on that evidence that had been presented, even though it was circumstantial. They would base their decision on it, correct? Yeah, but a, you, a jury may be in a position where they are expected to render a verdict. They can render a guilty verdict, a not guilty verdict, um, but I don't have to render a verdict on whether or not there's a God. Oh, see, I didn't realize that. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Well, I know you didn't that realize that you, you didn't realize that it's possible to not render a verdict on whether or not God exists. No. No, that's a John, new one to me. Re, I, I, that just baffles me. Um, is there anything? on which you don't have an opinion? No. Really? Wow, I'm I'm baffled. You should be. Yeah. Congratulations well, just, just on, on having, just, a, just, having an opinion on absolutely everything. Hey. I just wondered um, how you felt about I, circumstantial I, evidence. Do you think that cell phones cause cancer? In certain cases, maybe. What What do you mean, maybe? I thought you, you, you had an opinion on whether they did or not. In certain cases. How, how, what makes you think that cell phones cause cancer in certain cases? It's just my opinion. Why do you why do you have that opinion, and what are the cases in which it what does? It's just my opinion. Okay. Do you have anything useful to offer us, like evidence for God? Well, I know that the atheists are always asking for a burden of proof. Now. When we look back in ancient history, there's not too many things that can be proven directly. I don't know. I don't know why you're going on about this. So when you talk about the atheists, it's just me and Eric here, and you're saying that you have an opinion on everything, and you you didn't even know it was possible to not have an opinion on something. And so I'm just I just asked you if there's evidence you can present for God. And what I got was, if you look back in ancient history, blah, 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 blah. I, do you have a way to demonstrate well, that there, John, do you have a way to demonstrate that a God exists? Well, can, can I give you an example? Example of what? Well, uh, I used to attend university, and I noticed that in university, the professors have an opinion that uh, Socrates existed and that he taught the Socratic method. Now, do we have proof that Socrates existed? It doesn't. I, I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm asking about do you have evidence that God existed? Why, why would they teach that at university? So when they, teach, when they teach things at university, they teach based on the best available evidence and the best models, usually. Do they, at universities, do they teach that God exists? No. But they teach no. Socrates. Cur curiously, so curiously, even the example that you came up with, which doesn't matter because whether Socrates lived or not doesn't matter, um, is already different than the God one. So I'll get back to my original question that I've asked you before, John, which is, do you have a way to demonstrate that God exists? Why doesn't Socrates matter if they teach him? John, John, I asked you a question. Are you going to answer my I'm question? question? No, John, you I asked you a question. Are you going to answer my question? I'm asking you why they teach Socrates. John, I asked you a question. Are you going to answer my question? Not until you answer mine. John, I asked you a question. Are you going to answer my question? Who do you think is going to fucking win? This is my show. 
Well, it depends on how your answer. It doesn't depend on anything. It depends on nothing. I'm always going to win. This is my show. So when I asked you, John, do you have a way to demonstrate that God exists? That's a yes or no question, and we're not moving forward until you answer yes or no. I have the same amount of John, evidence. Do you that I have, have a way to demonstrate that God exists? Yes or no? I have the same amount John, of evidence. Do you have a way have to demonstrate that God exists? Yes or no? The same as Socrates. John, do you have a way to exist to demonstrate that God exists? Yes or no? The same as I do for John, Socrates. Do you have a way to demonstrate that God exists? Yes or no? The same as I do for John, Socrates. Do you have a way to demonstrate that God exists? Yes or no? The same as I do for Socrates. Yes no. Goodbye, sir. I wanted to get to asking him why he's appealing to circumstantial evidence because that's colloquially known as indirect evidence. Is that admission from John that he does not have direct evidence of this God? Because the problem with circumstantial evidence is that it's, it is indirect. It doesn't, it, it can be interpreted in multiple ways and doesn't necessarily fully affirm uh, one conclusion or another. So when I am evaluating, and I'm talking to you now, John, when I'm evaluating claims about something, especially when the claims become very spectacular, I start asking myself questions like, what explanation is more likely? For example, uh, the Gospels. You know, What's more likely? A man actually rose from the dead or somebody just simply wrote about a man rising from the dead for whatever reason, the advancement of a religion, money, wealth, power, whatever. What's more reasonable there? So when I started getting presented with circumstantial evidence, I'm gonna start asking myself, well, what more likely explains this evidence? Will it be a God? Will it be something more natural? And I'm gonna always lean towards more natural because the natural is confirmed to exist. We all live in it, we are all part of it. And we have not yet confirmed that the supernatural does exist. So I'm gonna lean away from that. So until you can show me that either the supernatural exists or a God exists by using likely better evidence and circumstantial evidence, we're not gonna get very far. So, yeah. And uh, Eric, address the thing about, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just need to apologize because I forgot that I wasn't steering. I've, I've shut down uh, <laughs> all in studio so that I'm not going to shut to hang up on anybody who you actually want no to worries. talk to. I am no, no longer worries, looking no at the call in studio list. It's entirely you. I just, I slipped into automatic driving mode yeah. right there twice. So. Uh, that, that, that happens to me too. It's like when you're, when you're used to driving, you're going to want to drive. So I totally, I totally appreciate that. I turned it off. Um, so it won't happen again. Yeah. But it, 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 here's the thing with the Plato thing. Like when you go to school and you learn about Plato, they are not trying to convince you that he existed. They're saying we should study this material because this material has something interesting to say. Whether Plato exists or not is irrelevant to the interpretation and use of the literature that's attributed to him. That's a very, very different evaluation, claim and evaluation than God. Because with the God claim, because Plato might not have existed. Maybe it was some other writer or some collection of writers that produced these works in which we study it. But when you look at the evidence, if you're going to be talking about circumstantial evidence about the universe, then you're going to be in the same boat as the Plato discussion. Maybe God does exist or doesn't exist. Maybe there's some other explanations that necessarily uh, this evidence can point to and fulfills the requirements of this evidence. So I don't think we're going to get very far with that. And unfortunately, we can't at this point because we dropped you. But tell you what, call back again another day. Let's not get stuck into a loop like that because Matt was trying to make a very very succinct point there was basically first of all we're in charge of the show we direct the conversation and if we ask you a question we expect it to be answered but um call back in some other day let's have some cooler heads and we can try again and take what i just said here take what matt said here ponder it come back and let's have a more civil discussion and see where we can get with that anyway all right let's uh move on Ed, let's move on hold on here might be a good spot to break up the monotony of the calls a little bit, um, or the monotony of taking call after call. Uh, so, uh, future schedule for the line. We have a bunch of awesome upcoming shows. Um, Arden was kind enough to post the schedule in Discord, but I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to go off of what's actually posted on the line website right now. Uh, so, tomorrow we have a Skep Talk with Forrest Valkai and Morticia. 
Um, that will be at uh, 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, I'm going off of PDT because that's the time zone I'm in. I don't want to convert. Uh, the day after that, uh, Tuesday, will be Chewed Gum with Eve was Frame and Alyssa Lo uh, Lube. Um, on Wednesday, we have The Hang-Up with Matt Dillahunty and Will Judy. Uh, on Thursday, we have the Transatlantic Call-In Show, and that will be with Arden Hart and Jose uh, Caballero. And then on, let's see here, uh, 26th. I'm trying really hard with these names. I'm not so great with the names. Uh, and then we have on uh, Friday, we have A Cuz I Wanna uh, with Forrest Valkai and Roxana Felig. And that uh, episode is titled, Is God a Misogynist? So that'll be interesting stuff. And then on uh, May 4th, we have the Hun Holy Trinity with Forrest Valkai. Eve was framed. Matt, Aaron, uh, Andrew, uh, or Seth Andrews, and uh, various other guests for a fundraiser for the RFR. So get, get ready. It's going to be a fun-filled week and a half coming up ahead of us. How'd I do, Matt? Anything I miss? Anything need to be mentioned there? I don't know. I don't have the nope. announcements in front of me. I shut down all okay. the stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, you did mention that. It is, it is distracting right. me from being able to. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, you just have to trust me on that, I guess. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get uh, another call going here. We have uh, another theist on the line, uh, William, with uh, no pronouns given. Uh, William is a theist, wants to speak on the existence of God and the afterlife. So, William, welcome. You're on the air. Hello, how are you? How are you? Pretty good. Tired, how are you? cranky. Kind of cranky. Look, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian. You know, when I was younger, I was, I was, you know, I grew up in the church. When I was 18, I didn't go to prison. And, you know, they say, Joe, I'm you know, I'll tell God. God tell me. And then, you know, my life went to the wayside for many years. And then in 2017, I choked to death. I actually died. Then uh, I remember where I was at, God, you know, he brought back to memory about 10 months ago where I, you know, what happened to me because I just forgot. I mean, drug abuse and all that. Anyway, two and a half years after that, 19, well, 2019, 2020, I got hit by a train. And I lived, I flew 30 feet in the air. The train stopped, the police was there, EMTs, everybody. Now, the thing that, that, see, I can't argue, I can't argue the Bible because People say, well, you know, I wasn't there when I grew up. All I know is what it's given. But this is what I do know. God puts eternity in everybody's heart. Now, the How person you know that? doesn't believe in God. Yeah. Because that's fine. And plus, and plus, I died, and I saw, I saw, I was in the afterlife. I was there. I seen it. No, now, here's, no, something, you, you just, here's something that... that William. Well, you, right. you said the only, right. the only thing you know is that God puts something in people's heart, but whether or not you died is irrelevant to that. I'm asking how you, what does God put in somebody's heart and how do you know that? He puts eternity in everybody's heart. Now, now what that means is, what that means is, you know, let's, let's say, let's say, let's say me and you, all three I, of us. I don't know, or on I don't know what you mean, William. I don't know what you mean by puts eternity well, I, in somebody's I, heart. I don't know what you mean and I don't know how you know that. I'm, I'm, okay, okay, this, this is what I mean. Let's, 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 say, let's say your parents died, God forbid, your parents died, you were on an the island. They died at 10 years old. Now you're 80 years old. You're laying there, you've been there 70 years by yourself, you haven't talked to a soul. But you know in your heart, this is not the, this is not the end. Now here's the thing that I don't understand is, people that are atheists, they'll commit suicide, they're miserable. But the people that are Christian, they don't fear death. Because they know, they know they're going to cheat. Okay, you know not, literally the nothing, yeah, William. William, nothing you're saying makes sense, and the things that do make sense aren't true. Theists do commit suicide. Atheists also don't always commit suicide. But I need you to explain what God does with someone's heart and how you know that's true. That's the only thing I care about. Okay, you there? Stay up. You there? Yeah, we're here. Go ahead. I heard, and there was a loud beep. I didn't. I didn't know what was going on. Plus my, yeah, the beep. The beep. Screen, so William, screen William, there. William. When you hear a beep, that means we muted you, so we can get a question out. So go ahead and tell us. Answer me oh, question. Oh, oh, now, oh, so now you're um, unmuted. Okay, okay. How do I yeah. know that? Because I mean, ever since I was little, I always knew that there was something other than me. I always knew that, and you know it in your heart. It's like when you know you love somebody, like you love your wife, or whatever. 
you just you can't like so you William, can't design William. It, you know what right? Will, William no, William Ma you William Matt, Matt asked you William Matt asked you how do you know that and you just simply said well I've known him my entire life that doesn't answer the question okay here's a, okay I, I just I just know it in my heart but here's the question I want to ask People that that, that still doesn't answer the question. Hey, if he just knows it and he's got right. no explanation, let's just let yeah. him answer, ask his question. Go ahead, William. You got All a right. question. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. The question is: You said you was a Christian for twenty years, right? More than that. Okay, more than that. Okay. You said to be a preacher and all that, and then something happened, and then you became an atheist. Now, my question to you is: Was it because you prayed? And God didn't answer your prayers the way you wanted it to, so you're like, you know what? There must not be a God then. There must not be. Because he don't answer prayers, so he must not exist. So I've been wasting all my time. And then the hate that you have for him is is being pushed by that. See, a lot of people pray for things. You know what I mean? Like they say, a drug addict. Like, now I wish I could win the, I wish I could win the lottery, then I, I wouldn't be a drug addict. You know, God knows he'll blow his own heart up. So he doesn't answer that prayer. But does that mean God doesn't exist? No. That means... God does it. And then when a child has cancer and they die, and the parents are praying for them, does that mean God doesn't exist? No. That means God is taking that child out of, out of that misery and out of that pain and bringing that child to him. Yeah. So where's the turn he's heading with him? William, now, we may, we may not agree with William, that. We William. Be... All right, William, i got to put you on mute so we can respond because you're throwing a lot of stuff out there. So I've literally told my story and given the answer to this dozens, if not a hundred times over the last 20 years. Um, and I find it really telling that rather than looking it up or asking me and letting me answer, you decided to construct an entire scenario where is it, is it the case that God didn't answer the prayers the way I wanted to and I got mad at God and left? No, that's not even remotely in the ballpark of anything close to why I'm not a believer anymore. But the fact that you come up with that story and other theists come up with that story um, rather than actually engaging with me or listening to the dozens of other times I've answered this question, tells us a lot about you and your belief. Yeah, before I mute you, I was going to say the same exact thing. So, William, you asked Matt what his experience was. You, you, you distilled it down to just something happened, and then you became an atheist, and then you questioned the way he prayed. You questioned his attitude towards God, whether there was anger in there or not. This betrays a motivation, I think, that you're not looking to see exactly how Matt actually deconverted. You're trying to come up with reasons why you should dismiss his deconversion because you want to assign motive or emotions or some type of irrationality or, or, or poor motive to it. Um, if I'm wrong about that, feel free to correct me. But that's, that to me, what you're saying there is screaming those motivations. You're unmuted. Um, no, 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 oh, thank you. No, the, re the, reason why, the reason why I said that is because I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they sit there and they believe and they believe and they believe and they pray and they pray and they pray. And, you know, and years go by and, and, and the prayer seems to be unanswered. So they're like, you know what, I must just be talking to myself. I must be talking to the ceiling. And you're not, that's a good I question. Understand it, but, that, that, that's actually, but, so Matt, but, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, so William, William, that's actually a great observation. Yeah. Maybe I was just talking to myself the whole time when I was praying. I was going to ask that question when you were yeah. talking about your... I was going to ask you that question about the near-death experience. I was going to ask you that experience you had when you were choking to death, or you said you, said you choked to death and you actually died. I was going to ask you, how I did you died. determine that what you saw, I was going to ask you to ask you, how did you determine what you saw was actually a vision from God and not just some generation of your brain uh, in a high-stress situation? Yeah, am I still on? Or? You're still on. Uh, uh, yeah, you're um, you're here. How how I know that? See, see it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it took me it took me a minute to figure. It took me a while to figure this out because, okay, uh, the woman that actually saw me die, I ran into her much much later that night, and when she saw me, her face turned completely white. Her eyes got big like she was gonna crack or something. She took off running in a straight line. I don't mean just jogging a few blocks and like. Phew. Uh, William, he, he William, I'm asking no, no, you, William, William, I'm, I'm asking William, William, I'm asking you, how did you determine yeah, what you experienced in your mind to be one thing or the other? And now you're talking about what something um, somebody else is saying. I'm, I'm talking to you. I don't care about what other people around you at the time were saying or doing. 
I'm talking to you. Let me ask you these questions, William. Have you ever had a dream? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, I've had dreams. Okay. Have you ever had a hallucination? I remember. Yes or no? Have you ever had a hallucination? Yeah. Yes or no? Okay. Uh, have you yeah. ever misremembered something? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So you've you've experienced yeah, yeah. Uh, dreams, you've experienced dreams, hallucinations, and you've experienced false memories. So when you supposedly died from choking to death and you had an experience, how did you determine that experience was from God and not one of those other three things? Because when God revealed it to me 10 months ago, it scared me so bad that I cried for hours. And then when I got God off revealed, the couch, I felt like a part of me. God revealed so, something I, additional I, I to you 10 I, months ago? I had a, I, I had, William, I had a did, did, I, I've, been, I've been in about crunch for 10 months now. William, was this, was this choking experience 10 months ago? You said this was when you were younger. So, 2017. Okay, so this other experience 10 months ago is a different experience? No, no, okay. 2017, I'm, I choked to death. I actually died. Then, oh, yeah, we went over that. 2019 or 2020, one of the two years, I got hit by a train. I flew 30 feet in the air. Now, I was, now the, the train conductor was not only amazing. Who measured it? William, William, I don't care. Part. William, I don't care. William, I'm sorry. I don't care about the train conductor or nurses or anything like that. I'm asking you how you made these assessments about what you experience. That, that, that is completely you and internal to your own mind. So I'm asking you questions about that. So invoking other people does nothing to help answer that question. All right? So okay, you, okay. You, you choke to death in a hospital, all right? And you experience something. No, no, and now you said you got hit by a train, no, and then you I also experience something. I wasn't, I wasn't in the hospital. I was on the ground. Okay, it doesn't matter. Hospital. It doesn't matter where you were. William, it doesn't matter where you were. You choked to death, you experienced something. You got hit by a train, and I'm guessing you were get, going to get to, I experienced something else. The, the, the same exact questions that I posed about the choking incident applies, and I'm asking you about the train incident. So you had two, right. you had two, you had two experiences, and I'm asking you, how did you determine the source of that experience? Because you, by your own admission, you have three sources of natural explanation for experiences like this, dreams, hallucinations, and false memories. You're, you're going for a fourth one, which oh, is the supernatural, okay. and that's God. So I'm asking you, how did you okay. determine which one of those is the actual reason for the experience? Okay. When I got hit by the train, it stopped. The conductor got his hired hand with a flashlight to get off the train to inspect. They found me. The conductor told him, I think I hit somebody. That guy talked to me. They called the police. The police showed up two, from two different cities. Two MT uh, trucks came. I was arguing with them, so I wasn't hurt. They were dumbfounded. I didn't want to go to the hospital. Then I left, went down to my wife's house, to see the same thing were split up. Her and her mother and stepdad had a police scanner. They heard it on the scanner. Describing somebody that got hit by a train, my wife knew it was me. There's no of this uh, pretending memories. I'm telling you, look, this is the best way to know it, dog exists. If you're scared to die, William, not because you got William, to stand, not because you're rich. Oh, if you're scared to die. All right, William, I'm gonna try this one more time, and then if you can't answer the question, I'm, we're gonna have to move on. So you're already you're you're bringing lots of other actors into this story, and I'm asking you. How did you make a determination about your own experience, your own mind, and, 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 and saying that this is a remarkable experience or why all these things you just threw out there, like it doesn't tell us anything about that. This is not evidence for your claim. This is all just, this is just noise. So how did you determine that your experiences were of some divine origin rather than just your brain in a, trauma, in a, in a traumatized state? Sorry, let me meet you. Unmute you. On a meeting. Somebody. All right, there we go. Sorry, there was a, there was a lag. So go ahead. Yeah. Answer my question, please. Go ahead. Answer my question. So how do how how do I describe? So I I, I need to. So you're you're asking me. This is the question you're asking me. How do I describe how I know the answer to? Hey, I, I I died. I know I was in the afterlife. God let me have a second chance. Uh, two hundred years later, I get hit by a train, uh, and I didn't die. How do I explain the reasoning behind both of them things? Is that what you're asking me? No. Is that what you're asking me? 
No, sir. I'm not, that's not well, what I'm that, asking you. you okay. That's the right. question again. All right. Uh, final time, and then we're going to move on because it's going to get a little tiresome soon. Okay, okay. Let's 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 just okay. focus on the choking incident because you said you went to heaven in the choking experience in, in the choking incident. No, no, How no, do you no, know no, no, whether no, I, I didn't go to heaven? You said that though earlier. I went. I, I was. I, no, no. I said I died. I didn't say I went to heaven. Well, you you not said I'm pretty sure we could rewind this footage, and you said you went to heaven. No, 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 no. Rewind it. Rewind it. Because I said I died, and I went to the afterlife. It was, I was in outer darkness. All right, the afterlife. The okay, uh, William, darkness. this is splitting hairs here. You went to the afterlife. How do you know you actually went to the afterlife versus you were just simply hallucinating because your brain was traumatized? Why would it be traumatized? What caused it trauma? What caused it to be traumatized? And how would I? Stop because you're choking to death. You're be you're choking to death. Your brain's being deprived of oxygen. That's a traumatic experience for a brain. How did you determine you actually went to the afterlife versus you were just hallucinating because your brain was in a traumatized state from lack of oxygen? Last I'm chance. My heart. Okay, that doesn't help us at all. William, we understand that. William, you explain. Okay. William, no, 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 hang on. William, you wait. Um, we, we, fully are, we fully understand that you believe this. We're asking why, oh, I'm and if the only and if the only why? thing you can offer and the only thing you can offer as to why you believe it is that you just believe it, then that does us no good. You, you got to present something that would convince okay. us. Okay, what I saw and what I've been through scared me so bad, and I couldn't. I don't. Get it doesn't count. matter, William. Even... William, William. If you hallucinated something that scared the crap out of you, that doesn't mean it's real. Okay, what about the train? I flew thirty feet in there. I had hundreds of tons. Who measured? Of, of who measured pressure. the thirty feet, and what <laughs> difference does it make? I have a friend whose partner was just hit by a train, and she's currently laying in the hospital, and is responsive to pain only. Yeah. How well, is I that had, relevant I, look, to I had a golf anything? Bag. Look, I had a golf bag. You know what a golf bag cord is? You put a golf bag on, and you can wheel it across the greens. I had one of them, had a bunch of stuff on it. It got hit, and all the kinetic energy went into the bag, down the handle, and into my rib cage because I was trying to get this thing off the track. When I pulled back on my third yank, you could slide a piece of paper between me and that train. It hit that car. The kinetic energy went all of it, the whole entire mile long train. I'm, so I'm I'm mile long, what? Longer. So what? How, so so what? Seven pounds so of what does pressure. William, seven pounds of William, William, you're muted, what William. What does it? What do you, what is getting hit by the train prove? People have been hit by trains. You got hit by a train. What does that prove? Was it prove? Yes. So, Am William, I'm, imagine you're in a court, you're, you're, William, imagine you're in, William, imagine you're in a courtroom trying to convince a jury that what you're saying is true. Or, or, or rather that, that the afterlife exists and you were there, and you're giving them this. Imagine what these people would think about what you're saying and how unconvinced they would be. See, that's the thing. I don't care what people think. I'm just telling then you. Why, why, did you us? why did you call it's to present something if you down. don't have something that would convince us and don't care? No, no, it's like this. I'm telling you what happened to me. Y'all can choose to believe it or not. Now, things happen we to y'all, you can tell me, I can see the believe it or not. But this is the thing. I don't believe it. God told I don't me believe to tell y'all this. Wait, wait, right. wait, 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 stop. Well, hang, oh. on, hang on. William, did you just say that God told yes, you to tell us this? Yep. Okay. How did God tell you to look, tell us takes, this? Look, it takes seven pounds of pressure to break a bone in the body, right? No, I, yes or no? Seven pounds. William, William. I'm the one that's asking the questions now. I'm the one that's asking the questions now, William. You said God told you said God told you to tell us this. How did God tell you to tell us this? What? He put it in my heart. He he laid it on my heart to tell you. I'm sure you know about you know about this, Matt. God has put things on your heart. You were a Christian for a long time. You know you know the deal. God put it on my heart to say this. Now how am I asking this here? Okay. 
Does it take seven Wait, pounds of pressure to break I don't body? know. I don't know, and I'm not here to be quizzed on physiog physiognomy by you. I'm trying to figure out. You're saying God told you to call in and tell us this, and I'm trying to figure out how the hell you know that, and what else can you ask God? Can you ask God questions and have him answer? Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes when I ask God, when I talk to God, he'll, he'll answer. He'll, he'll, he'll send somebody to me what you can. He works through people. He just going like, hey, hey you're uh, down there uh, sitting in the chair. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He, it doesn't work that way. Now, maybe back in Moses' day he did, but he talked to he talked to a pillar of fire. But he, he uses people to talk to people to get through to people. You know what I'm saying? It, it, no. That's just the way it works. We are, so we are what, I'm trying to, what I'm asking you is, can you ask God a question and have him answer it? He will answer it in his time, and, and, if, and if he wants to answer it, he'll send somebody to me with the answer. How do you know that God wanted you to call the show today and say something? Here's a question. Why would God have you call in and tell us something that is absolutely useless and could never possibly convince us or change our mind? Why do you, would you think that God would do that to you? I mean, don't want to ask. I need you to do something that I have. Please, be Please, don't be disrespectful. I'm not disrespectful to you. But I just want to, just, just a small question. William, William, why, why, William, why would God tell you to call in and present something that would absolutely not convince us, would make you look delusional and foolish? Why would God do that to you? Well, he, God watches it. He sees it. He sees it. So I just, I just, I just stumbled on you. So that's why I don't know a lot about you. I was watching the atheist experience, and then uh, I tried to contact that. And that was offline, and then I seen the line. William, why would God? Is God like the old show uh, on MTV, like punked? Is God just a prankster? God is he just being a dick? Because I like, I would never tell you to call in and say any of this to anybody because none of it is convincing. It makes you look foolish and it can't possibly convince us. So why would God do that to you? You ever, you ever watch American Idol? Yes. That's uh, okay. There was a black chick on her that, that loved singing gospel. She was on a plane with a couple hundred people. The plane crashed, killed, it blew up, killed everybody. I heard her pretty bad, but she was the only one that lived. The only one. Now, you explain that. That's a miracle. That's not something that comes out of Cracker Jack at Walmart. That is a bona fide miracle. There's no way evolution can explain that. There's no way that atheists can explain that. That is, she was delivered and protected to by go. God himself. All right. All right, William, thank you very much for the call. We're going to go ahead and move on. You have a nice evening. All righty. Uh, okay, we have three calls left. I believe the lines are now closed, so we're going to wrap up uh, the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour on hopefully these three calls. Um, so let's Ketchy go and break this up. Akwachi, uh on American Idol was one of two survivors of a plane crash. How many people are on the plane? It's 107 dead. Wow. She had uh, third degree bones, burns over 65% of her body, was given a 30% chance of survival. Sounds very tragic. She got this the kind golden of buzzer back. from Simon Cowell. So this was on America's Got Talent, not American Idol. Uh, but she didn't come into the top five. So what was the purpose of uh, saving Ketchy and leaving her yeah. uh, scarred permanently? That, yeah. That's, that's a and really I wonder, good miracle. And I wonder of those hundred plus people on that plane, how many more of them were theists, believers in God, and they all died. Yeah. Like, why would God? I, why would God just choose? On be eighty. Yeah, on average, it'd just be it would be eighty. You know, it'd be majority of the folks on that plane. They all died, but because this one particular Christian survived, because of this arbitrary, oh, uh, she was on a, a, a talent show once, 
that somehow has special meaning. This kind of well, harkens back to last can't week. Can't explain that. <laughs> yeah, okay. evolution can't explain it. Ice cream, ice cream making can't explain that. Quantum physics can't. Ex- I know, uh, but no. This this harkens back for the last week, where where we live in a world where we are going to notice coincidences like that. We're going to notice patterns in the world like that. And it, th- those things are just unavoidable, especially when you have an understanding of st- uh, statistics and everything. Um, it'd be far more peculiar if we lived in a world where stuff like that never happened. That would raise far more of an eyebrow than than a world where we have coincidences because we just have things that just occasionally line up. Same thing like if I just uh, if I hooked up a random number generator on a computer and I just started generating numbers. Like let's say let's say I hook up ten random number generators all in a row on 10 computers and I light them all up and every second they all put out a random number between one and a hundred. Every once in a while, those numbers are going to line up and you're going to see some type of meaning in there. You're going to see, oh, these, these numbers are sequential or these numbers all match or all these numbers are prime. It's just going to happen. Um, and appealing to these random coincidences and these events that you can post hoc look back and go, oh, I see all these attributes. She was a Christian. She was on a talk show. She was the only survivor. Um, she was very devout or whatever. Or even like, oh, she was told when she was young that she was going to be special or something. You can find all kinds of things like that and post hoc go, oh, well, this is confirmation. This is confirmation. This is confirmation that the issue, she's somehow special. And this, boom, God confirmed. Th- this doesn't work. Like, this doesn't work in science. This doesn't work in court. This doesn't work in any sense that is meaningful to anybody. We cannot use this methodology to determine whether a God is real or not. So anyway, I'm done rant, rant, ranting. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we'll break it up a little bit. We have three callers left. We have an atheist, a theist, and a pantheist. Uh, let's get the atheist uh, out of the way. Uh, not any bad way, Aaron, but uh, we'll go ahead and get you going because you've been on hold for over an hour. Uh, Aaron, he, him, in Australia. He's an atheist. He's looking for options on my, quote, lazy atheism. How you doing, Jonathan? Hi, guys. How you going? Going pretty good. All right. Can you uh, can you can you define to us lazy atheism? Because I didn't realize atheism had to be not lazy. <laughs> Basically, I took um, not to go into too much detail. I know that's a pain in the ass, um, but I basically took um, the Bible, church, religion, all that kind of stuff. I took it on surface value, much like you might for. Uh, uh, say, okay, like some people don't like Hawaiian pizza. You might take a bite of it. Ugh, no, I don't like that. Not for me. Not going to eat it. All right, cool. That's sort of how I t- um, got my feelings about religion and all that sort of thing. I went to church when I was little. I didn't really like enjoy going. My mum wasn't. She's was like, okay, you don't have to go. So I never had any pressure to have a belief in that kind of thing. It just wasn't an important part of my life. And so I took to atheism as the default, I suppose. And, yeah, that's basically it. I looked at religion. I said, not for me, and went on with my life. Okay. And you think that you didn't do your due diligence in in adopting that atheist label? Do you think that perhaps... You jump the gun. Well, that's the thing. Call no, that's atheist? why I call it lazy. In that, yeah. you know, um, like as I said, I went to atheism as a default position, and I basically I looked at it from, I guess, a dictionary definition. It's like this is what atheism is. Like it's not being convinced that a god exists. Blah blah blah. And I thought, yeah, that sounds like what I'm going for. And that, okay. this is based in the the principle that, in my opinion, and oh, this, this is probably going to piss a few people off, but to me, religion, all that sort of thing, it's not important. It, to me, it's not important. And so that's why I say I took religion on a very uh, surface level. I've not read the Bible. Right. I've not done anything. I've never done, like... I'm the, an- the complete opposite of Matt in that he's done his research. I've done fuck all, you know. Yeah. Um, I can, I can so, tell you, though, um, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you, me, and Matt are all very lazy A-vampirists, right? <laughs> yeah. None of us, 
Like none of us have, have taken that claim seriously. None of us have gone out to, uh, to thoroughly examine all evidence of vampires in order to come to the conclusion, right. yeah, we're, 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 we're a vampirists. Um, yeah. the only, the only reason why theism has such weight, it's because a whole lot of people believe it. Imagine a world mm. though, imagine I were to transport you to a world though, where vampirism was the norm and theism was just relegated to some small, really small subset of people believing. Would that now put you yeah. in a position of, wow, I got to really not be a lazy, a vampirist. Do you think that would be the case? Mm, not really because yeah. I sort of don't really care in the sense that, you know, like, um, much like yourselves, I'll, I've mainly been watching a lot of Matt's videos because, well, it's, it's funny to watch him go off on CS, to be honest. But I'm much like him in the sense that, you know, okay, if someone's making a claim, provide me with the evidence, and I will change. I will change my belief based on that. But it doesn't necessarily mean I will um, change my way of thinking. Okay. For example, we know that Taylor Swift exists, but you couldn't pay me to listen to her shitty music. I bet I so, could. So I bet I could. <laughs> no, nah, there's not enough money in the nah. fucking world, mate. There's not enough money in the world for you to listen to the biggest artist yeah. in the world who who many of us love her music. Really? No, nah, like, her music there's, doesn't do it for me. There's I've stuff I hate. Yeah. There's music. No, no, no. There's music I hate, but you could definitely pay me to listen to it. So if I offered you a million dollars to listen to one Taylor Swift song, you'd say no. Probably. I don't believe you for a second. But hey, show me the I money. You, sir, you, sir, <laughs> need to go to business school. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let, but let's ignore you, you, you all get, that because it's not relevant. Um, but, Aaron, but Aaron, you get okay. you get the point that I was trying to make earlier, right? We, we yeah, theism yeah, has exactly. weight because lots of people adopt it, but that doesn't make it more or less worth investigating than vampirism or unicornism or anything else. Oh, no, um, exactly. it, I, I agree. Yeah. So it's so, I mean, my advice is it's okay. Don't, don't compare yourselves to other atheists like Matt or me or anybody else online and say, oh, wow, they've done so much more than I have. I'm somehow deficient in my position. I agree with you. Atheism oh, no, is the default. I'm deficient. I just, yeah. Well, not, Sorry, not deficient, on. but that you haven't done enough. Like you, you, you are deficient in the effort you put forward in, in investigation. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Um, that's atheism right. I mean, is the default. Kind of my... Go ahead. Sorry, go on. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. All right. That's kind of my, why I've called in is my, with my question. They, like if I was a theist, um, saying the exact same things I am in that, Oh, I looked at the Bible and religion and thought, this is terrific. I love it. But I didn't really read the whole Bible. I didn't, you know, I didn't really delve into it. I just took it on surface like, oh, this is great. I love it. Would you say, oh, well, you know, you really should do a bit more research into it to sort of really understand it? Don't you and think there's a Like to me, I would say, um, sorry. Don't you think there's a difference between becoming convinced without sufficient reason and remaining unconvinced without sufficient reason. You don't think there's a difference between those? Oh yeah, definitely. That's what I'm so, saying. So like, that's why I'm saying is you're comparing if, apples to oranges. It's there's, there's no motivate that if you became convinced for bad reasons, I would object to that. But if you remained unconvinced, yeah. it doesn't matter. But how do you know Taylor's music is bad right. if you haven't heard it? I've heard snippets of some oh, songs. You would. And there you go. I would. I would. Sorry, I would. What? I have to give you a million bucks, and you've heard it. Look, I do what I Not do because it's songs. important. I do what I do because it's important. Because people vote based on their beliefs, and people are trapped in religious beliefs. And I'm convinced that they don't have good reason. And because if it turns out that I'm wrong, I'd like to know. If you don't care mm. enough to find out if you're wrong. That's on you. Yeah, of course. And that's the thing. Like, to me anyway, I feel like, okay, I'm like, and this is where I was going with the um, Taylor Swift reference. Even if God was demonstrated to me, 
it wouldn't turn me into a like I believe his existence, yes, but I wouldn't worship him or anything like that because it just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Well, it's not. I, I've said the same thing, but I mean, it's not about whether or not it appeals to me. I don't. I don't. I don't get that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that. Yeah. Worship is the sort of thing that is. I don't think any being deserving of worship would expect or demand it. It's not about appeal. No, exactly. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, no God um, secure in his God. Yeah. No God secure in his Godhood would demand worship. That's the way I look at that's it. That's right. That's right. Exactly. But basically, right. um, what my, you know, like, as I said, if a theist took religion on um, just as it is and says, oh, yeah, it's great, I love it, like the concept or whatever, you know, I think you would agree in saying, you know, well, you should probably read the Bible a bit more and, no, you know, no. What difference does reading the Bible okay. make? I mean, you're, you're making a presumption there that there's, what, why didn't you say you should read the Bhagavad Gita more or the Quran? Oh, well, just well, whatever, depending on the religion, of course. Yeah, that's fair enough. Cool. Um, but what I basically really want to know is, is my, um, just having a, a basic uh, surface level understanding of atheism, like, do you feel that I'm not, like, would you say I'm disingenuous about about it? I, I don't know. The only required, the atheism is just not being convinced of, of the existence of God. Yeah. How, what what no. is there to be disingenuous about? I'm probably wording it wrong. Let me t say, for as another example, um, well, for, as in, for example, I don't really enjoy sports. Um, I've seen sports on TV. I used to play some sports when I was younger. It didn't really interest me, so I have no, like, I don't bother with it. Okay, but if I was to say oh, I love sports and I watch it all the time and I play several sports, blah, blah, blah. Fair enough. But if I said, yeah, I like sports and couldn't um, but didn't go to sports matches or watch it, wouldn't you think of that was strange? Like, well, you say you love something, why not involve yourself in it? So if a theist was to say, oh, yeah, I love the idea of religion, but I don't go to church, I don't read the Bible, blah, 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 wouldn't you think that was a bit strange? Depends on what their view of theism was. Well, the, the, yeah, difference, between the, two, the, the, the difference between the two, Aaron, is that on, on the theist, the theist is accepting a claim and then admitting that they don't have really good justification, they haven't really investigated the claim, they're accepting something. Mm. Whereas on the flip side, yeah. an atheist says, "I'm not, I have not I'm not convinced. I either I have not been convinced or I am not currently convinced, and I'm not going to bother mm. investigating because the same reasons why you don't investigate vampirism or other supernatural extraordinary claims is because you it's okay to just have the default position of not believing and wait for the evidence to present itself yeah. when it does, because there's nothing That's to indicate wrong. that theism is necessarily more important than vampirism." It's, it's, mm. you, you can't, you can't put yourself in a position of, I have to investigate all of these other claims out there because I have some responsibility to do so. That's not the case. It's not practical. And it's also not no. true. No, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. But also Probably we've spent more time anyone. talking to you. Like I've never spent this much time talking to somebody who says they don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just that it has no effect on me. Okay. Like, so the. So in Australia, are you saying that people who believe don't have an impact on you? Because I know that's not true. I've been there. What, like me personally, you mean? Or, or do you yeah. mean like with voting and... Believers, people who believe, vote and make laws that impact mm. you. Yeah. So I care about that, of course, but... 
you know, it's, again, and this goes back to the word lazy. Like, I don't care personally, you know, about pursuing anything religious or, you know, of that note. And I guess you could say, you know, well, let me let me preface everything by I really should have said at the start. I'm not a smart person. <laughs> I'm a bit of a dumbass, and I don't really like. Not only do I not understand religion or anything like that, I don't understand politics. I don't understand. Okay, All right, let me make this real easy, Aaron. Are, yeah. are you are you enjoying your life? Yeah. And you don't really care uh, about religion or whether or not it's true. No. Go ye therefore unto the world and continue to enjoy your life. I give you permission. Exactly. That's it. I mean, that's what sort of up, not upsets me, but I find sad about a lot of theists. Is you know, I've talked like I worked with a guy once who was a Catholic, and um, I remember him saying. Oh, I asked him oh, what he was doing for the weekend. Sorry. So, actually, tell you what, tell you what, Aaron. Um, we're we're running a little low on time here, so let me let me follow up with the question there. So, Matt just just gave you his um, cool. you know, blessing for lack of a better term, to go forth and enjoy your life. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. my question is, my question is, so you, you I'm not going to affirm your statements, but I'm just going to reiterate them. You called yourself basically a bit of a dumbass. You said that you feel lazy. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 th these, these don't sound like statements of somebody who's necessarily happy with that. Are you happy with assigning those labels to yourself or are there things you want to do to change that? Yeah, because, You're looking for the motivation to do so. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's much I can do necessarily about being dumb. Well, that's I think not, that's not the question I, I asked. Hold on, hold on, Aaron. I'm, I'm asking these questions oh. very specifically here. So, um, uh, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm um, please answer the questions I, 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 I'm asking. Uh, is it safe to say that you're fine with you assigning yourself those labels or is there some part of you who wants to change that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm fine with it because okay. I don't really have, um, like in the same way that I define myself as ugly or not very good looking. It doesn't, right. it doesn't worry me. Well, my, my advice so, to you is, all right, so, so Aaron, my advice to you, to you is, if, you, if that's the life you want to live, I'm not going to judge you, it's your life to live. And if you want to stay in that state mm -hmm. and you want to assign yourself those labels and you're fine with that, go forth, as Matt said, live your life, don't harm others yeah. doing it. That's, that's all I can say. That's right. Or, exactly. or if, if somewhere deep down inside of you, you don't want to live like that for the rest of your life, there's a part of you that wants to grow and experience new things, and to learn, if you realize there's a part of you down there inside you that wants to do that, find something that sparks your interest and then start learning it. And then don't worry about the next step after oh, that or 10 steps after that or 100 steps after that. Just start with something small, start learning, and just see where your brain takes you, see where your life takes you. And maybe you'll, you'll exactly. end up someplace yeah, even do. better than you are now and you'll be happier than you are now. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, Aaron, do uh, you have no any problem. final, final thoughts before we... Okay. Um, well, hey, yeah, thank you no, very much for the call. Appreciate it. Sorry, no worries, worry. Go ahead. Guys. Final thoughts. Final thoughts? Cheers. No? Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Cheers. Bye. That damn delay. All right. It's, We've it's got two so callers. Yeah, yeah. We've got two callers left. Uh, we have uh, Jonathan, uh, no pronouns given, in Arizona. Jonathan is a theist. Uh, he wants to address the special pleading fallacy. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks, guys. Uh, so, yeah, just, just I want to know that I understand the special pleading fallacy the, the same way that you guys do. So how do you, how do you define the special pleading fallacy? Go ahead, Matt. So, sorry, um, special pleading fallacy is when you have one standard for one uh, claim and a, and a different standard for a different claim when they should have the same standards. 
And the way I define it is, okay. is when you are, when you are baking in exceptions, when you're trying to set up a system, uh, like, you know, premises, logical rules, and then you're baking in some exception because it helps your conclusion. That's kind of how I look at special pleading. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, I've, I've always thought that, uh, like two, two kind of obviously big questions in the world is like, why does the universe exist? Uh, rather than nothing, and uh, how, how how does life exist from non-life? And um, all of you know, based on my understanding of uh, you know, all evidence and, and induction, that life only comes from previous existing life, and that uh, everything that begins has a cause. That to deny that those things um, are necessary for the origin of life or the origin of the universe seems to me to be a special pleading fallacy. What do you think? Sorry, I missed that last statement there as I was writing things yeah, down. Right. What? Uh, yeah. So you you said that you said that you 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 examine the questions. Why does the universe exist instead of there being nothing? And they made the statement that life only comes from life. And then what was your follow up after that? Uh, that it seems to deny those two facts that we that we seem to know with all of evidence and induction. It seems that both would be special pleading fallacies. That it is. Uh, somehow reason to believe that life can come from non-life uh, and that the universe could come into existence without a cause. Okay, so um, nobody's in a position denying this um, in order to not believe something. So let me, let me see if I can find a better way to explain this. Um, life comes from life is true but we don't know whether or not life can come from non-life. What we do know from things like the Miller-Urey experiments and others is that the basic building blocks of life apparently can come from non-living things. Life is basically the label we put on stuff. And so while we don't know how life necessarily started in one place or in every place, we do know from those experiments in, in, and others done in abiogenesis that the basic building blocks of life can begin from non-living things where the, the when we talk about universal origins we uh, we can't investigate beyond the plank time so we can't say what came before the big bang and before the big bang that may not even make any sense considering that time is part of the uh, the model and began there so there's no special pleading to say well there's no special pleading involved to say i don't know how the universe began and there's no special pleading involved in I don't know how life began. And that's the position I'm in. Okay. Um, so uh, if all of the supporting evidence is that, at least right now, uh, that from our experience and direct observation that life uh, does only come from uh, prior life. That's not the, um, that's not the fact. That's not the fact. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So to say, to say that life only comes from non-life because we've only observed life come from life is essentially the black swan fallacy. You're basically saying that, well, we have, we have, and I agree, we have nothing but our experience that life comes from life because that's all we've observed. But because that's all we've observed, that doesn't mean we've observed everything. So and, it, it's like, you know, yeah, go ahead, Matt. And if we are correct that at some point there was not life in the universe and now there is, then definitionally life must have come from non-life. Well, that's if you presuppose that there is no, no God or there was no supernatural. No, uh, even, even with a God, the universe at some point had no life and now has life. So we still have a situation where life comes from something that is not life. Whether there's a God doing it or not is the, is the question. Yeah, it's well, entirely possible. Okay. It's entirely, Jonathan, it's entirely possible that, let's say for a moment, hypothetically, that our understanding, science's understanding of the way the universe developed from the Big Bang onward, uh, uh, stellar development, planetary development, abiogenesis, evolution, uh, let's say for a moment that those are all true and correct. That's still compatible that a, with a God exists. They don't exclude each other. 
Um, so a god could have a god a god could have created a lifeless universe and set the processes in motion to create life eventually from non-life. Well, that would still make God indirectly responsible, wouldn't it? Maybe, maybe not. No. Well, if if God, and again, this is you know hypothetical. Um, if it was the case that God existed and created the universe and everything that took place after creation, wouldn't it follow logically that everything, every event that ever took place in the universe, God would be indirectly responsible for at least? Indirectly, sure. Yeah. Right, and that that would be a biogenesis, right? Yeah, it could be a science experiment. God could have just simply said, I'm going to make the singularity expand, and I'll just see what happens. The, the difference here is that you've changed scope. You've gone from life can only come from non-life unless there's a God involved, but we just described a scenario where God creates essentially the natural laws, and the natural laws do allow for life to come from non-life. And now you want to claim that God's indirectly responsible for it when the issue is whether or not God is directly responsible for it. Your, your initial argument was this can't happen without a God being directly responsible. And now we've shifted well, I, to uh, indirect. Also, jo yeah, also, Jonathan, how, how are you defining right. life here? How, how is life defined uh, here? Well, I, uh, just real quick. Um, I, I didn't sure. like, uh, outright make the claim that, that that's what I'm saying, that, uh, you know, life could only uh, But am I stupid? God didn't. No, no, I, I get that. I'm just trying to follow a logical pattern here. Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not impugning your intellect or anything like that. Um, it, uh, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about, um, like, I'm not saying it's impossible for life not to come into existence without God. I'm just saying, uh, given, uh, just based off the evidence we have in induction, all of the evidence supports the idea that life only comes from pre-existing life. No, no, I'm not making no, 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 no. That's not how this works. It's the same way with I, the swans. We could, we could find nothing but white swans that does not eliminate the possibility of a black swan being out there. Right, and I'm not standing here trying to eliminate the possibility. I'm just saying... You literally uh, just did. That's why, that's, why, that's why he has repeatedly called out the, the black swan fallacy every time you've done it. You said that the evidence leads us to the conclusion that this is the way things are. No. The fact that we've only seen white swans doesn't mean there's not a black one. The fact that we've only seen life come from life doesn't mean that life doesn't come from non-life. Okay. Um, but we've also okay. seen, but we've also seen life come from non-life. We've seen that? Yes, the Miller-Urey experiments and other experience, experiments in abiogenesis demonstrate that the basic building blocks of a life, like RNA, can come around, can come about from non-living material. Are have we replicated it entirely the way it happened in our case? No. Um, it, can we show exactly how it happened in any situation? No. But the basic building blocks of life can come from non-life. That's what those experiments show. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when science um, when science refers to when science refers to abio, abiogenesis, it's it's a placeholder. Essentially, we're like we have we see this point in time where we didn't have life and we do have life. So we call this event, this transition, a biogenesis. Specifics on how it happened, how it worked, we can really only guess and make educated uh, 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 deductions about. That doesn't mean any of those things are set in stone. That doesn't mean those things necessarily happened. It's a placeholder because it's it's a gray area in our knowledge about uh, our development. So to say to say that. To say, and here's the thing, though. Okay, so in 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 a mall like this, a, a god could have reached down and went ding, and boom, there's life. God could have created the universe the way we talked about earlier: Big Bang, cosmic expansion, all that. And then abiogenesis, God could have said, "Okay, I'm gonna do a little nudge, get that going." That could be the abiogenesis event. We have no way to eliminate that. Doesn't necessarily mean we accept that, but it's the same way with the other abiogenesis uh, uh, events that could potentially have happened. Possibilities, but nothing we have set in stone yet. Something happened. That's all we're saying there. A biogenesis yeah. is just something happened to to make life go and do things. And at a minimum, the assertion that life can only come from non-life is simply not has not been demonstrated to be true. And sure, this I is actually part of the true. reason. 
And, and Jonathan, this is part of the reason why I was asking you to define life, because I, 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 I already mentioned it before about a god could potentially have just set everything that we know about in science in motion. But you said, well, indirectly, that's life causing life. And I'm asking, what is your definition of life? Um, you know, off the top of my head, uh, I can only give like descriptions of what uh, happens once you have life. I, I don't know if I would have an adequate description of what life is. Actually, well, I don't even know if there is one. Okay, I mean, I, I, I completely can appreciate that. Life is a hard definition to nail down. I, I agree with that. I can't do it. But just, yeah, just, just, just give us some attributes of life. What are some attributes of something that is alive? Um, so this is obviously not going to be exhaustive, and it's not going to pertain to everything living. But yeah, um, fine. I'm not going to. I'm not going to agree. I'm not going to agree with you. I'm not going to agree with you over an incomplete explanation. I'm just asking. You know, just get, get your nothing idea. Nothing to worry about. I already acknowledged I couldn't do it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, things that are sentient. Uh, you know, are are, are an example of something that is living. Uh, sentient. Something that. So are are plants well, sentient? I'm, yeah, so I'm going to stop you, not because I'm trying to beat you up, because I'm trying to like really narrow into something like is accurate we can really work with. So you said sentient. Humans are sentient, I agree. Plants aren't. Bacteria aren't. So sentient's not a, 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 a requirement, acquired attribute of life, correct? Right, and I don't know if you, if you heard me say it, but before I even said that, I said these are not attributes of everything that is living. All right, yeah, let's, but, let's, let's try to zero in. Okay. Let's try, I'm asking about the life definition, so let's try to be as general as possible. What is an attribute that covers all possible life? Yeah, um, I, I, I didn't uh, think enough of, uh, ahead about that, so I, I'm not going to give like... No I don't have an answer off the top of my head. Yeah, that's going to be sufficient. My, I, I the direction, that's totally fine. I, I totally can understand you more. I mean, I, that, like Matt said, is this, is, this is a difficult thing to, to pin down. I fully understand that. Um, my thing is, though, so I think that the life that you're thinking about with us and everything on Earth, I consider that to be a very different form of quote-unquote life that a god could potentially be. Because as far as we know, gods don't reproduce, they don't have digestive systems, they aren't mobile. Um, assuming one existed, I don't think we could even call that life in the same sense that we call ourselves life. So it could be that uh, the, the the statement that life comes from life because God created the universe could potentially be false because you're 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 basically equivocating the life that we are and the life that God is. It could be two different things. I'm just throwing that out there for you to right. think well, about maybe. It, it's impossible for me to be equivocating on it because I literally didn't give an example of it. I, I'm I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying it's, it's possible that the way you're you're as you process this and think of this later, beware of a potential equivocation lurking in there. I wasn't accusing you of that. I was simply saying you could potentially have one in there. But if, if we're at least sure, in agreement sure. that we, we have not yet demonstrated that life can only come from life, then if we're in agreement on that, then we should all agree that it's fine to say, uh, when somebody says, how did life come about? It seems to me the correct answer is, I don't know. And if somebody says that they do know, then I want to know, what their answer is and how they got there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's completely fair. Um, yeah, I, Cause I, I wish we had I'm like gonna, a little bit more time. I'm going to bet, Jonathan, that you believe you do know how life came about. No, not no. I mean, in, in the philosophical absolute, no, I would not. I wouldn't. No, say there's that. no I could not knowledge is an absolute. But okay, all right. But do you believe that you have an understanding of how life came about? I have my beliefs on how life came about, for sure. Cool. I'm going to bet that it has something to do with God. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm a theist. Yeah, so first it does, yeah. What do you know that I don't about the origin of life? Well... I, I don't know. It's believe. Um, my, my belief no, no, is... I no, no, hey, hey, Jonathan. Jonathan, I, I'm not saying knowledge. I'm saying, what are you aware of that I'm unaware of when it comes to the origin of life? Well, and, and like you, you know, have admitted before, like I'm pedantic as well, so I'm, I'm very nitpicky on words to make sure I understand what you're saying. So when you say sure. aware of, doesn't that imply objective truth? No, it means that there's some fact 
or line of reasoning that you're making use of that I'm not. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, I, I'm I'm currently convinced that the claims written about Jesus in the New Testament are are uh, more plausibly true than not, um, and that uh, God exists and is the creator of all things that exist, including life. So that's that's where that's where my conception of how life came into existence is. Okay. Yeah, but like I didn't know if you had any other follow-ups, a follow-up question. Or um, I mean, we I've can go down the path, of, but, but the thing yeah, is, go- of all the people who are experts in studying the origin of life, generally speaking, they don't agree with your conclusion. The overwhelming majority. <laughs> of scientists elite scientists do not believe in any sort of personal god and sure your belief is incompatible with science there's no scientific method that could reach the conclusion you've reached right science can't reach the conclusion you've reached right and my uh, uh, yeah I and my, my 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 hang up with that too, Jonathan, is that God created life gives, it, it adds nothing to the conversation. There's zero explanatory power there. Um, yeah, I, I guess it kind of depends on perspective, whether you accept that it, it has explanatory power or not. How did, how did God create life is all I can ask then. Cause if, if you think it adds something to the conversation, then, then you can explain to um, us how God did it. Well, I, I, I definitely not saying like, I know all of the like details on, how he created life um so i definitely can't can you can you, can you distinguish i'm, I'm going to be i'm not trying to be mean-spirited here but can you distinguish between god created life and a magician waved his wand and created life <laughs> can, can you uh, i'm because from I, I, for, for my so. for my point of view as an atheist from my point of view as an atheist those both have the same explanatory power Sure. Uh, I guess it depends on what you believe about magicians, because <laughs> I mean, from my understanding, magicians admittedly are I don't, doing. I don't believe in. I, I don't believe in magicians or in a god. So, from from my point of view, they're both the same. Magicians, like magicians, don't I, exist. Well, I don't believe. Okay, so let me rephrase that. I don't believe a god exists, and I don't believe that actual magicians who practice magic exist. Oh well, I don't either. So it's bizarre that you would ask me to right. distinguish between something I don't believe versus something I'm, I do. I'm trying believe. to. I'm oh trying to tell God, you. It's a fucking hypothetical. Yeah, We're st- Jonathan, the, point illust- Eric, uh, the point that Eric's trying Jonathan, to make is this. Go ahead. How do you tell the difference between God did it and magic universe creating pixies did it? What does saying God did it? add to the explanation that helps you understand the process better N- nothing that's what i'm saying i don't nothing. i don't even Which know is exactly fact. what that's exactly what eric said and you denied it okay so it, it, like i'm very careful to not interrupt you guys and y- y- when you ask me a question i would i would i would appreciate to get through the answer i don't give a shit what you would appreciate don't you dare start fucking lecturing me on how to do my own fucking show eric literally said god adds no explanatory has no explanatory power doesn't add anything to it then we did a big old tap dance uh, about magic and magicians and whether or not there was magicians and then you finally admitted the thing that he said from the beginning which was what God Never, adds I'm no explanatory to power to the explanation. All right. All right, Jonathan, thank you for the okay, call. Good. We'll catch you, catch you next time. I mean, you can keep talking. Right. I just, nah, if it's I'm okay, going to go think, through uh, and, and re-explain why we're, we're running in circles here and then get asked yeah. what was the question when I literally just yeah. said it. I mean, the, the, I, Jonathan, I hope, I hope if you rewind and watch that again, I was coming at you with good faith and the pedantry is just, we're trying to get somewhere in a conversation here. And if you want to start throwing up things like, oh, you believe a magician? Like, you understand what I'm saying here. So roll with it. Have a conversation with me. Don't do not do this throwing flack up to d- distract and all that. Don't appreciate it. But anyway, we, have, so we do have to drop your call clarity. because, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah go I'll, ahead, I'll do this while you're getting the announcements and yeah. other stuff ready. But for clarity, 
when we say God doesn't add any explanatory power, what we're saying is if you take a black box and say you can put God in it, so th there's no universe, and then this black box exists, and then a universe exists. You can label that black box God, and you still don't know what happened. You can label it universe creating pixies, and you don't know what happens. You can label it magicians, and you don't know what happens. And if in the process of trying to do this, you go on about how you don't believe in magicians, well, we don't believe in fucking God. Uh, <laughs> It, it's yeah. bizarre. You, you believe in God, but not magicians. We don't believe in either of them. But what we're saying yeah. is that black box does not add anything to our understanding. It is still no universe. A miracle happens. Universe. That black box analogy is actually really good. Uh, and I, I appreciate that as a software developer because, you know, we, we have when, when you're designing software, you usually tying into other systems that somebody else made. You have no idea about the internal workings of those systems. All you know is, according to the documentation, I give it this input, it gives me this output. So if you think about abiogenesis as that black box, no life goes in or some set of scenarios, uh, 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 some set of um, uh, uh, conditions go in and outcomes the condition of life, and you treat that as a black box, that's exactly how science is treating it. And they have the label on there, abiogenesis. Abiogenesis tells you nothing about what actually happened in there. And that's what my, my point from earlier was. It could be naturalistic causes in some you know various ways. Could be a god, could be aliens, could be a Pans, uh, panspermia could be all kinds of different explanations. We have a black box there and we call it abiogenesis. We keep it as general as possible so that we don't out of hand eliminate possibilities that we have no justification to eliminate. Whereas Jonathan's coming by and says, oh, that God, that black box is God, eliminating all the naturalistic possibilities without justification. And then when I, we come by and say, well, what if we just simply call it a magician? Like, how does that change anything? Um, you can hopefully see the problem there is that we're eliminating possibilities without any justification, without cause, and 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 that's not going to be a reliable pathway to truth. That's going to send us down wrong paths of trying to figure out what actually happened. Um, I like the black box analogy. I'm going to steal that, Matt. There's a problem in the sense when you assert that life only comes from life. Is God life? Well, they'll declare that but god isn't life in the same sense of you know the physical yeah. life here in the universe that we're describing and the model that we have while we can't get back beyond the plank time to discover that um the the big bang cosmology that would show a singularity definitely there's not life now if there's life outside of that singularity if god counts as life or whatever else or god is going to be the origin of this but there's not biological life and god isn't biological life so you could say just to avoid the tap dance, biological life has only been observed to come from other biological life. And so now, rather than calling it life, we're talking about biological. Now there's no God in there because God isn't biological life. So if biological life can only come from biological life, then biological life must have always existed because there can be no origin of it if it exists and it only comes from that. If there's any state of affairs where at some point there's not biological life and then there is biological life, and by the way, it's it's really weird that we have to even go through and start putting biological life on things, but you know, that, that extra adjective. If, if there's ever any state of affairs under any model, God or not, that goes from no biological life exists to biological life exists, then by definition, abiogenesis has occurred. Biological life has arisen from some state of affairs where there's not biological life. Now the question becomes, how do we do it? And that's what Eric's talking about. We put in a black box, we call it abiogenesis. Is it because there's a God? Is it because there's directed panspermia or undirected panspermia? Is it, you know, go down those lines. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Cool, amen. All right, last caller. We have Leo he him from Washington. Hey neighbor, uh, Leo is a pantheist and he wants to talk about the presumption of innocence. Hey, Leo, how Hello you doing? there. I'm doing Hi. great. Uh, nice to talk to you guys. I noticed that uh, uh, Matt was uh, yawning a few minutes ago. I hope you don't fall asleep during this call. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I am a pantheist, um, but I am a member of the World Pantheist Movement, which means that 
I basically am, uh, our movement is compatible with atheism and humanism. We just have a lot more positive things to say about what we think and how life should be lived than just a blanket, uh, I'm a humanist, I'm an atheist, which basically doesn't tell me much of anything. Um, Hang on. And however, the re- yeah, however, the reason that I call Hang on. Matt Stadium, hello. Yeah, hang on. Hello. You do realize oh, that okay. humanism has quite a bit to say about how we should live our life, and pantheism doesn't. So why are you saying that pantheism uh, has more, more to say about how we should live our life than humanism? Um, would you, uh, if you would, if you're, if you're capable, would you just uh, bring up, if you've got a computer there, uh, pantheism.net, and you will see what world pantheism is. Uh, I think it's very different from what you think. And if you bring well, I'm that just up, talking about that's... what the see. I don't. So, world pantheism is that a religion about pantheism? Because that's not what pantheism no, it's not, is. It's, no, it's not a religion. We have no deities. I just said we're compatible. Religion with doesn't require religion doesn't require a deity, Leo. What I'm asking you is: Is world pantheism separate from pantheism? It depends on what your definition of pantheism is. If your definition pantheism, of pantheism, pantheism is the position of believing. Pantheism is the position of believing that the universe, or all of reality, are our God, our supreme entity. That's not world pantheism movement. Okay, world then I don't know what the hell world pantheism not, is, or why. I, then I don't know what world pantheism is, or why it would call itself pantheism when pantheism has a clear definition. I, I I totally agree with you that the name is something that I would change. I would change the name cool. of world pantheism so, movement to world naturalism movement, but I don't have that ability to change the name. However, I just said before, if you just go to pantheism.net, you will see I'm there. exactly what world pantheism means. Sure. So different from so, just the term pantheism. Why would you say that it has more to say about how we should live our life than humanism? Have you read the Humanist Manifestos? Well, um, have you? Well, I can't say because I did, I'm not um, a member of any humanist movement. I'm a I didn't member ask of the that, world Leo. Pantheism. I didn't ask that, Leo. No, I don't. I asked if, no, I haven't. I, I haven't, asked if you. I, I, I asked if no, you, Leo. Why are you trying to fight with me on this? All I asked is, have you read the fucking humanist manifestos? Yes or no? No. And have you? Then read how the can world you pantheism? say? Then how can you say that world pantheism says more than that? That's like saying you, this is a, a thing said, straight out of no, fucking black adder. Stop talking. It's this thing straight out of Blackadder, where straight out of Blackadder, where they say the Infanta's eyes are bluer than the famous Stone of Galveston, and so you, what you're saying is something you've never seen is slightly less blue than something else you've never seen. Don't you? Do, you don't need to make a declaration of how much cooler you think world pantheism is than something you've never fucking read. Please continue. I, I said that what it says more than is atheism. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You said atheism or humanism. Humanism, you have never... Did you, did you cut me off? No, I've never what? Uh, well, you have never explained in any kind of detail what you mean by everything that humanism means you have said that you are leo and i am leo i am leo yes leo i told you you told me what you haven't read the humanist manifestos so you can't say shut up you can't say that world humanism says more about something than something you haven't read, can you? No, and I'm not saying No, that. but you did I'm say that. I, no, but you okay. did say oh, that. Okay. okay, then I misspoke. So let Fine. me say this again. Fine, why, why, let me, Leo, let stop, me. stop. I'd like to start over 
and I'd like you to start over without saying shit that you clearly don't know the first fucking thing about. Can we do that? Uh, yeah, it's not that I don't know the cool. first fucking thing about it. I know a little bit about it. Oh, my, never mind. Never mind. You know yes, what you now, get from me, now, Leo? Yes, not please, one please, fucking please. thing. All yours, Eric. All right. So, okay. Leo, let's uh, let's okay. let's move on to your statement. Leo, let's move on to your statement. Okay. You want to talk about the presumption of innocence? Yes, that's Can correct. You give us uh, some Matt has okay. said a number of times I've listened don't, to him. Don't mention my says, fucking name, Leo. Don't mention my name. What? Don't, Don't mention, mention my name. name. I'm not talking to you over this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt said. Jesus fucking Christ. That, that in. He just said it in the show. He just said it uh, earlier in the show that in a court of law, the defendant, when it's, if the defendant is found not guilty, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean he's innocent. Is that, is that correct? Is my statement correct? Is that statement correct? If a defendant if a defendant is found not guilty, that's correct. That does not mean the defendant's declared innocent. Okay, now that's in conflict with the Supreme Court. The presumption of innocence is in no way connected to the Constitution of the United States. The presumption of innocence comes directly from rulings from the court, particularly the Supreme Court. One of them is Taylor versus Kentucky. In those cases, the Supreme Court ruled that you must presume innocence of a defendant until they are found guilty. Now, if you say that the, a defendant Leo, Leo, is not Leo, innocent, Leo, uh, hold on, Leo, well, Leo, 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 Leo. No, I, I, need, I need to clarify here. We need, we need to clarify here because innocence is presumed until the verdict. The verdict itself is independent of how you treat the defendant during the process. You treat the defendant as if they're innocent, but then the verdict is something entirely yeah. different. Okay. All right. Why didn't you let me finish? I didn't. You because I need to clarify me. something. Please, Leo, go ahead. I'm going to allow you to continue. I just needed to stop you so we can determine and, and clarify that the way we treat a defendant throughout the process is as if they're innocent. But that's completely independent on what the implications of the actual verdict is at the end of the process. Please continue, though. At the end of the process, suppose the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, if the defendant is not proven guilty or proven not guilty, what at what instance does the defendant lose the presumption of innocence? The presumption of innocence is how we treat people. The actual verdict is independent. So a person, a defendant, can be declared not guilty by, by, by the jury, and afterwards they are treated as if they're innocent. But the verdict itself is not a declaration of innocence. The case can eventually be opened back up if new evidence comes to light, or there's a mistrial, or different things. So we're talking about two different I'm things, sorry. the way we treat the defendant and the way I'm that the sorry. judicial system handles the verdict. I'm sorry, but the uh, person cannot be retried. That's double jeopardy. Once Under certain circumstances, a person can be re Hold on, Leo. Leo, yes, we, we have, there is double jeopardy, yes. But mistrials and other things could potentially put a person back on the, on, on the defendant's seat. And there's also federal and, and civil courts. There's appeals. There's different ways for this to occur. It's also irrelevant whether they can be retried again. They're not yeah. declared innocent. The presumption so, so, of innocence is, is is what Eric was saying was exactly how we treat people. And when the when the jury rules, if it's in fact a jury trial, or when the court rules, you're either declared guilty or not guilty. But not guilty is not the same as innocent. And I was saying that just because you've been ruled not guilty, like OJ was ruled not guilty, even though I think he did it. So I don't think OJ was innocent. And the fact that the court views him as not guilty is with respect to the law, not with respect to whether or not he actually fucking committed the crime. That's the point. The, 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 point, the point is, however, that if no. the person is much, why can't I finish a statement? 
Go because ahead. Yeah, because you don't listen, pursuit. because you don't listen, because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, because you don't know what I'm talking about, because you're trying to straw man things, because you think you know shit that you don't know. That's why I'm not going to let you talk. Uh, well, I, I, I'll tell you, I almost stick with the Supreme Court ruling. I suggest you look up Taylor versus Kentucky, and then, and, and if you don't want to do that, then obviously you don't care to look at the evidence. So, Leo, oh. Leo, what is the what is the actual Leo? Hold on, what is your actual objection to the way we are using the court analogy when we're determining whether something is true or false? Because that's that's I think ninety nine percent of the time whenever we invoke. Mean? Okay, so so do you know how we take the court analogy and apply it to determining whether something's true or false? Like for yeah. instance, the existence so, of God. Like is God is God is God guilty of existing or is God not guilty of existing? Like, do you understand how we're applying that analogy to the God question? Well, yeah, I. I, I I'm an atheist. I just don't call myself an atheist because uh, I, I'd rather that's, I'd rather label myself as something positive than something negative. So, so Leo, that's yeah. not the question. And the I fact asked. that you think it's negative is a problem too. Yeah. So, Leo, the, the, no, your your atheist theist, the, Leo, the, your atheist theist status has nothing to do with the question I just asked. I'm asking you: Do you understand why we invoke that analogy when we're talking about these things? Yeah. Because I'm. No. What, okay. What, 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 and, and, because I'm trying to get, I'm yeah. trying to figure out whether you think we're applying the analogy incorrectly, or you're just calling up to be pedantic about law. She's no, I, I, I just basically, I just basically think that we should follow what the law says, not what an individual thinks about what somebody did. If you are judging somebody, you should be basically judging them on what the law. Says you should judge Leo them has on, no ability to consider abstracts or analogies. It's like you know, a parade. You can yeah, Leo. You want. So hey, Leo, I'm, I got you muted here. I'm sorry, but you didn't answer my question. I don't, I, and I'm not convinced that you understand how we apply this analogy when we're talking about truth claims. Um, we're at the end okay, of the show. This. We need to probably, yeah, go ahead. Let's try this, Leo. Yeah. Would you agree that the number of blades of grass on the planet, if we were to count them, would come out to be either an odd number or an even number, and those are the only two options? Yeah, I agree. Cool. Now, if I were to say to you, I'm not convinced that the Are number is either? odd. You know, the technical glitch. Yeah. If if you were to if you were to say the number of blades of grass on Earth were odd, and I say I'm not convinced, does that mean that I'm convinced it's even? No. Correct. Same thing is true if you say the defendant is guilty, and I say I'm not convinced the defendant is guilty. That does not mean that I am convinced the defendant is innocent, right? That's correct, but legally he is. No, no. legally he is According presumed. Law, he is. Shut up. Legally he is presumed innocent. The presumption of yep. innocence is, is not a declaration that you are innocent. It means we are going to treat you as if you are innocent until you are demonstrated to be guilty. It does not say whether or That's not you correct. actually did it. I know it's fucking correct. I've been saying it since long before you called in. For 20 fucking years I've been doing this. I The fact that someone is not determined to be guilty does not mean they are in fact innocent. The fact that we presume they're innocent is about how we treat them until such time as guilt is established. We are not in any way ever declaring that they are in fact innocent. Does that make sense? Not to me. Goodbye. All right, this is Colin Leo. I'm imagining the jar of gumballs on the defendant stand at a trial and declaring the gumballs innocent of being even does not mean that they're, I'm sorry, 
Declaring the gumballs not guilty of being even does not make them odd, and vice versa. If the court were to declare innocence of being even, then that would mean that the gumballs are odd. So there's a reason why we use this analogy, Leo, and it's very effective, and it is, it, it, it's effective at, at illustrating the point. If you want to conflate the issue with how we treat people, both on uh, the way the process treats the person and the way they're treated after a verdict, completely separate issue about what the actual verdict was and what the verdict says about the person. Anywho. All right, that's our show. Any closing statements, Matt? Anything you want to get off your chest? I, just ready to get back I have to, nothing yes. to get off my chest, but I will say that <laughs> I, um, we, we've got more reptile experts come up, but also uh, I've been digging, listening to, to um, even Alyssa in particular on chewed gum uh, on Tuesdays. If you haven't checked it out, by all means do. Um, over the next week or so, like I'm not going to be on the Sunday show next week, or am I? Hey, producer lady. Uh, let's see. Next we're, week, we're, uh, we're in shirt. Next week, uh, uh, Sunday show will be uh, me and Forrest Valkai. I'm looking forward to that. Yay. And then it looks like after hours will be. Yeah, we agreed encore. to do the after show because we can get back. It's the same situation as this yeah. week. So, yeah, except it's Dilla Hunty and Shannon Q. 20 minutes more driving, but we'll get there. I'll be back for the Sunday show after dark next week. Ooh. Cool. All right. And I'm super happy that my computer went three hours without crashing. So maybe that means it's fixed. We'll have to see. My computer crashed twice last week during the stream with Aaron. So uh, I, I ripped everything out. I rewired all the USB and I updated drivers. And hopefully that fixes things. So that's one of the, well, one of the annoying things about below. Look for Yeah, check out the links below. Check out linemerch.com, call line.com, yeah. or sorry, QA line.com, uh, and then patreon.com slash call line. Cool, cool. All right. Well, hey, thank you, everyone. And uh, from what I hear, we have a 30-second outro clip that Arden's about to play. So uh, before that happens, Ooh, thank you very awesome. much for calling. Thanks for the callers for calling in. Thank you for the audience for uh, keeping the chat lively. And yeah, we'll catch you later. I, I think I hit the wrong button, everybody. <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> There you go. Uh, oh, yeah. I've only got two more questions in this section. This next one might be loaded or it might be easy. Uh, but this is, this is mm -hmm. the second to last question for everybody. Forrest. Forrest Valkai. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Me. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty fucking overwhelmed right now. I got a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm I, making good headway on, on editing. Uh, I can hear the I'm writing some cool stuff. There, I feel like I feel like there was a lot implied in that. I got a lot going on right now, and then some asshole called me to do a podcast in the middle of the day, totally unplanned. Yeah, I feel like that was it's, in there. It's a uh, parentheses. Currently, about one thirty in the afternoon. Uh, I just took half of a shower so that I could come here and be on this podcast, right. and uh, I haven't eaten anything today. Uh, well, I'm very I. tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm currently in a <laughs> fast. Are Are you making sure you still hit electrolytes when you're fasting? You got to do that. I'm not in a fast. I just, my life is in shambles and I live like a slob and I haven't fucking eaten anything yet because I'm fucking busy doing stuff. <laughs> and I, as I realize as I'm sitting here, I'm like, why is my stomach hurt so bad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> lick, put, put some salt in your hand and lick it. It's good for you. Hell yeah. Get those electrolytes. I'm going to go get some fucking, some, 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 like a, a, a succulent Chinese meal. A meal? This. A succulent Chinese meal? A succulent meal? Chinese meal. That does sound nice. This is the one that's got me by the penis. <laughs> He's got me by the penis, people. Have you seen his interview where he does clarify that that he he made that part up? He, there wasn't there wasn't yeah. any penis. Oh, dude, that was that was the context that I needed after all these years. Seeing I that interview was so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, here's the last question of this segment. What would you name a cat with markings around their eye that looked like a monocle? This is very important. Um, no wrong answers. I would name uh, uh Erasmus. Okay, Erasmus or Snurt. Okay, all right. I'm trying to remember. Or like maybe Brungus. Brungus would be good. 
Eve's answer was something like... I'm bad at naming things. Eve's answer was something like Gertrude. And I realized when she said it that I had done like the, the, you know, the riddle where like, uh, the person comes in the hospital, I can't operate on them because this is my son. How is this possible? And it's just to expose sexism that, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. doctor is, is the mother. And I was like, shit, why did I assume monocles were only worn by boy? I was like taken aback that she was saying girl names. And I, I realized, I don't think I've ever seen a girl wearing a monocle in my life. A bit, a bit be hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a monocle. Uh, that's my new podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Just a Monocle uh, with Jimmy Snow. No, my new podcast, the personal one that won't be unplanned and impromptu like this, is it's the best name that anybody's ever come up with. Have I ever to- have I already told you this? No, uh, you haven't. But feel free to shameless as hell promote my new. Well, it's not even out yet, so I can't. Pr- what are people going to do? The, the, <laughs> but anyway, my the podcast featuring me, Jimmy Snow, will be called. This is the official name. Jimmy Snow has a podcast. Nice. Isn't that just the best? Nice. Uh, all right. I love that. That ends the, uh, the personal, the personal questionnaire. Uh, if you've got time, Thank God. we're, we're going to do the, the <laughs> read some YouTube comments directed at you. I bet they're going to be all mostly nice. And then we'll do the, yeah. the, the game and, uh, we'll call it a day here. Let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Let's type in forest. If, if they are nice, don't, don't do it because I can't handle that right now. <laughs> Let's see. My compliments to the chef for the title's use of shred. Bravo, Jimmy, Jimmy and Forrest. One of my favorite combinations of people. I agree. I think we, I think we tag team well. We work really well together. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate it. I, our last show we did together is, was a lot of fun. That was, that's a, it. was. I, I'm still riding the high of how much fun I had that night. Uh, Hell yeah. Erica is awesome. I was, it, I was ecstatic when I see her and Forrest doing another show that I watched. John, go home. You're drunk. Let's see. Right on. This one is how you and Aaron are awesome. Uh, you're saying you don't want too many compliments. Okay, here's one that's a little critical. I'm surprised that Forrest and Aaron, though they spelled it Aaron, didn't call out the caller on his dishonesty. He began by proclaiming that science led him to deism with the vapid glass metaphor, but quickly shifted toward it being a residual daddy issue from early religious indoctrination. Do with that what you will. Do you got anything? Okay. Uh, yeah. It's literally like when you're on the <laughs> in the hot speed and somebody's gish galloping at you, I, people are always going to be disappointed when you only manage to knock out seven of their 99 statements. And you're like, I can't. Yeah, that's, that's like, I, I don't think people like it. it yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to say like, oh, whoa, is me here. But like, I, I don't, I think like a lot of people that are, are critical of these shows as I was when I was watching, you know, the first times I ever watched AXP and everything, I'm like, oh, I wish they'd done that. Oh, I would have done this, but I would have like, that's all fine and good to say. But when you're sitting there with lights in your face and you know that everybody is, there's somebody watching every fucking muscle twitch that you do and every fucking time you look and every, and you just uh, under intense scrutiny and you're trying to keep up with what the person is saying and you've got the chat open and you're looking at the next three calls to know what's going on there. And you've got like producer chat yeah. on the other side and you're making sure your framing is right. You've got three different, you got fucking four different windows on two different screens open in front of you. And you, you know that, a, you know, several thousand people are going to judge everything you do. You're going to do your fucking best and that's, what's going to happen. And if you think you can do better, become a host, like uh, yeah. uh, start a channel, do some stuff, get good, get famous, call we'll us and, and we'll give you a job. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. 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 I, uh, here's, <clears throat> here's a, um, uh, on the same episode where the person who was like, I don't like your reaction to Chuck for being a bigot. Someone else within moments of that same one had written, Lol, Forrest going ham on bigots is literally my favorite. So it's funny how often that happens yeah. where you get the two inverse comments from each other. You know, I, two things about that. Number one, like, quick, fucking, quick, what kind quick, of person quick, would quick. I be if I let that shit? Yeah. Let's go ahead and do this rant. I just need to step away for a second. Uh, I, I, okay. There's, there's been something delivered to my door that needs to be put in the fridge. So I'm going to step away. Okay. And you do your rants while I'm gone. Don't say anything I wouldn't because I will All listen right. to this in post probably maybe. We'll see.
Okay, it'll 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 be short. You, you go ahead. All right. Be right. Uh, I was gonna say that number one, like, what kind of person would I be if I just let that shit slide and just dealt with what he was actually saying? Like, you, you gotta fucking stand up for your trans homies. And then also, like, to the person who was saying that they that you I I you should have let this go and you shouldn't have been and like I'm all for. Yeah, I think they said something along the lines of like, you know, I'm all for standing up for trans people too, but like you didn't need to take it this far. Fuck you then. You're not actually for standing up for it. If you have like trans friends and you aren't willing to go to bat for them and you aren't willing to get into fucking fight with somebody who's being shitty and disrespectful and dismissive of their humanity and you aren't willing to vote in a way for, for people who are going to protect them and protect their rights and vote against people who are going to fucking heart them, like, you don't have trans friends. You know trans people. And there's a big fucking difference. So, like, put up or shut up. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. There. And then, since Jimmy's not back yet, uh, I'm going to uh, say uh, here that if you ask really nicely uh, in the chat, Jimmy will show you his belly button. He will do it. Um, so, if you're watching this or, I guess, listening to this, uh, I need you to, on the next several shows, uh, ask Jimmy to show you his belly button. And he'll do it. If enough people ask, he's a little shy, but if enough people ask, he'll do it. So I need you to start asking him, make it a trend in the comments. We need to get the numbers up to, so that enough people on every show are like chanting in the comments, show that button, show that button, you know, show me that belly button, Jimmy. Cause he eventually he'll do, it. he's very proud of it. He's very proud of it. And he wants people to know about it, but he's embarrassed to, to talk about it. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to feel like he's leading the charge you know what i mean so you have to ask him to give him the confidence he needs to show you something that he's very proud of which is again his belly button my, so my belly button that's that's that so don't listen to any of that don't okay. worry about it i uh it's funny that you say that because uh <laughs> i have said many times i would rather my straight up dick pics leak than pictures of me casually shirtless <laughs> that is not a yeah, one thousand percent true. I have a pretty deep belly button right now. Uh, hopefully, yeah. I told him how proud you were. You don't need to fucking brag. It's deep. There's a lot of lint gets in there. <laughs> it's always dark blue, even if I wear a white shirt. It's the weirdest thing. Keep it to yourself. Somebody explain the science of that. How come if I wear a white shirt, I still get dark blue lint? Where is it coming from? I need to know From what orifice did I produce this lint? Uh, let me tell you the, I forgot I had ordered groceries. The only reason I ordered groceries was because there is a chance that Matt will be stopping on his way home from a convention today to utilize my woodworking, uh, we'll say skills, even though it's more <laughs> tools, uh, but w w might need to use one of my woodworking tools on the way home. And I realized that there's a high chance he'll need to use the bathroom he every time he stops by, he usually does. Uh, uh, well, he or Arden will, 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 and the hand soap in that is in the uh, you know, that phase that you're in denial about needing to refill the hand soap where you're like pumping it like 30 times just to get the right amount in, or you're like opening it and wiping it out with your finger. It's kind of, it's kind of I, in that I, phase. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I haven't been there in a long time, but I I get what you're what you're saying. Yeah, Amber and I are bougie, and we wait until there's a fucking like Bath and Body Works sale, and we order like five thousand fucking soaps and just keep them uh, up yeah. everything. We're fucking. You should come by sometime. Try our cool soaps. We have a million of them. I will. I will. I do order a lot, but I'm I'm finally at the end of my. So I just. Just did a soap refill, but with it, I had ordered roast. That's why, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, we never have to refill it. We can just exchange exchange the soaps because we're that fucking cool, y'all. Not trying to boast or anything like that, but we're rich in soaps over here. Rich in soaps. God, I didn't know they were doing that well. Uh, we're fucking living high on the soap hog. Let's see. The soap hog. Someone said that you and Josie on the, on the channel, you and Josie have the warmest smiles. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's pretty nice. I'm trying to scroll it's, to find you it's, something else. It's my, it's about 98.6 degrees yeah. in the mouth. Hell yeah. Um, for his face when he said he has a sexual relationship got with God has me fucking crying. You stole that from me, you bastard. That's my what? bit. 
I don't know. I don't know what you said, but apparently you said you had a sexual relationship with God. No, I didn't say that. Some guy, it was when, uh, it, was, it was like one of the first shows I ever did with Matt. Uh, and, oh. and, uh, this guy called in and it was biblically. I think we yeah, let biblically yeah. on, uh, for a time. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, uh, he at some point or another said that he has a, his, his relationship with God is like so complete and so perfect. He even has a sexual relationship with God. <laughs> and I think the the thing that I, I asked at the time, if God is a top or a bottom <laughs> and it like nobody answered me, but like everybody in the comments was like, that, that was like the trending thing for a second. I saw in the comment section of that one. I see. Okay. At least you didn't steal my bit. Uh, no, 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 I'm just kidding. No. You can have all my bits that I heard it as it came out. It's not what I meant. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, what's funny is, uh, even I were talking about this when we were reading the comments, how you and I have a similar chemistry that to what she and I have, I would say our on air chemistry is almost identical. And yet when she and I are having a good time together, the comments are, wow, Jimmy flirts with Eve a lot. And never is it that I'm flirting with you. And arguably, I am. No, I'm just kidding. But but it's weird. I mean, <laughs> it's weird how it's always. It's. Uh, I think people don't realize just how queer I am, except for that one guy who I, was, I commented about how every time I bring it up, I need to stop bringing it up because every time I do, he can't stop himself from imagining me sucking his dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real comment. He's like, you give me no choice when you bring up. And then from, and it's just, holy shit. What the fuck is wrong? With bring you? it up more. Yeah, I know. I was, like, I was like, bro, there's nothing wrong with that except for that. You're not keeping it to yourself. That's not a thing I need. Right. You, know? you need to talk. I made, I, so I did a, I did a bit um, with this guy named Scotty Wartooth who, who does, he does a cosplay of Jesus and he, he uh, 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 on TikTok And we did a video together where I, as a biologist, call Jesus on the phone and start complaining about like human design errors and stuff. Um, and uh, uh, at one point in the call, I'm like, why are our testicles so stupid? Like, why are they hanging outside of our bodies where it's dangerous? They can get hurt. Uh, uh, whales and hippos have their testicles inside their body. It's safer. It's more streamlined. And like, just, just I'm just complaining about this. And I got this one comment talking about how fucking stupid I am and how terrible evolution. And, and they brought that up and they're like, uh, first of all, uh, uh, having the testicles outside the body is more visually appealing. And it, it looks <laughs> And I was like, and I'm like, all I heard is that you like the look of balls. That's all I'm getting from this comment. I haven't read the rest of the comment. I won't read the rest of the comment. I know how much you like the look of balls. That's all I need to know about you, sir. I'm just like, now I'm just trying to, uh, the people who don't understand sexual selection and stuff. And, and uh, it's just silly. It's literally like, that's, if that was true, ovaries would be on the outside as well. And men would be obsessed with them. Show off the little ovary cleavage and little uh, ovary cleavage. Yeah, just peeking, peeking a little ovaries under the belt. Uh, whatever. <laughs> People are dumb. Let's see. I I'm not fine. I even tried to like. Oh, here's a great one. Forrest Valkai continues to be the only good host. I really don't like when people no. talk over the college to basically put them down and shame them because you never do that, Forrest. Doesn't matter if they're wrong. Nope. That doesn't warrant shaming them and only serves to get their atheist viewer base to go, ha, look, stupid Christian. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, this person's correct in every way, um, yeah. and I am the best host, and that is exactly why. Oh, uh, smash that like and subscribe, is, uh, but, but to me instead, to go go to my channel, like and subscribe. I don't have a problem with anybody <laughs> saying that they're the best host, because I, I don't feel I'm the best host. Uh, so I'd have to... I don't feel I'm the best host either. <laughs> I'd have to third person approximately. I'll tell you who I think will be the best host in the next, in a couple years. I'll tell you off air, but, or maybe, not even a couple years, but... Uh, one of one of the people who works here, I'm seeing the rate at which they are getting better, and I'm like, okay, holy shit, this person's gonna be fucking nuts uh, before too nice. long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm not gonna. I don't want to put pressure on them or uh, tell people who my favorites are. All right, let's do the quiz. You right down? On. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. Text me who that person is after the thing, so I can try to like lapse some of my fame to them, <laughs> and, like become oh. friends with them and and grow by proxy. <laughs> You're you're gonna wanna I'll, 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 I'll yeah I'll uh uh 
I, I shot you the text, but you won't be surprised. I don't think at all by the text, uh, but uh, you're going to want to for sure latch on. Right on. <laughs> Cause, cause for, for real, though, I, I am joking about that. But actually, though, if somebody's doing a really good job, I want to work with them. That sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I, I, for me, I'm, I'm in the position of like my hope is that everybody goes on to do great stuff, and that hopefully I can be uh, a useful. St- I don't want someone to just look back and go, "In my history was Jimmy and his network." I want someone to look back and go, "In my history was Jimmy, and I'm glad he was there because he, you know, the the tools that he helped me with." Uh, were effective, but I don't need to be thanked at an award show or anything. I just want to feel like I'm making an impact uh, that doesn't require me to put my face on shows anymore. For sure. That's, for that's, sure. That's my highest aspirations. Anyway, uh, were you surprised? I sent you the text. I can't imagine you are. I haven't looked. Oh, well, why don't you? I'll look now. Hold that. Uh, just hang on a second. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Right. I was, it, it, yeah, I felt like I gave away enough of context. People will will uh, wonder about it. All right. Don't put it in the comments of the show, though, patrons. Keep it to yourself because I don't want to have to read. We read the comments from the previous show at the end of each show. I don't want to have to read all of those <laughs> people mm-hmm. speculating over who I think the best at specifically the call. I mean, this person is going to be great at a lot of stuff, but I think at the call in format stuff. Uh, holy crap. I'm just blown yeah. away. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Today, the you are playing for Elizabeth. Now we have multiple Elizabeths. Uh, Eliz- okay. I, I believe the easiest way to tell you if you're the correct Elizabeth. Uh, I am referring to a person named Elizabeth who is probably Elizabeth, and the last initial is G. I think that will help rule out the other people who are like, "Am I the Elizabeth?" Uh, but if you don't receive the message at some point in the next twenty four hours with Either the prize, which is a T-shirt, uh, Never Have a Bad Day T-shirt, the Forrest Valkai holiday special that won the mug thing, uh, or if mm-hmm. if Forrest does not get four out of the five questions right, you will get a $10 coupon to the same merch store. Uh, that'll become as a message. So that's, if you never get that message, you're not the right Almost the T-shirt. No, All right, no, cool, no, yeah. No, uh, uh, I'm here for Elizabeth everywhere, we but use- especially this one. We use the, because I have such an obsession with the, like, uh, materials and how it feels on the, we, we, we don't use the, the cheaper tier. Our, our, it is not, $10 is not almost the cost of the t-shirt, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, we do the, we do the nice, super soft autism approved ones. Anyway, here we go. Yeah. Uh, of these five of them, uh, it's five questions, four of them are multiple choice. One of them is not. The first one is not. I think you will find the first one very easy. I'd say it goes harder. It gets harder as we go. Number question okay. number one. Donald Trump is on trial for hush money payments that he concealed, potentially to avoid swaying the election. Can you name mm-hmm. the porn star he allegedly paid off? Wasn't that Stormy Daniels still? Correct. Oh, fuck. That was a fucking noise. I didn't like it. Yeah, I, I hate it. Go wait, on. Wait till, yeah, you, that's, uh, wait till you get something wrong, because I forgot to fix the uh, pad, so I have to use a different uh, wrong. It won't be crickets uh, this time. Anyway, all right, if you prefer, we could do when you get it right. That's an option. That is better. You like the air horn more? All right, cool. cool, cool. I'll turn it I on. I love the air horn. Yeah, let's do that. And if, if I get it wrong, do the same air horns, but louder. And that's how I'll know. <laughs> uh, or a different rhythm. <laughs> uh, all right. So good. Question number two, multiple choice. In what major mm. U.S. city did a bridge collapse after a collision with a container ship occur recently? Is it A, Baltimore, B, Newark, C, New Orleans or D is nuts. Oh, that's a good, yeah. I, uh, it's, it's either Baltimore or ease nuts. Um, I'm going to go with Baltimore. All right. That is correct. Hell yeah. The smallest, this is number three, the smallest of the formed elements of the blood are the a white cells, B platelets. 
Can I finish, please? No, a, all right, go ahead. A, white cells, B, red cells, <laughs> C, platelets, or D, ease nuts? It's, it's platelets. You actually put them... You put them in order of size. White yeah. cells are the largest. Red cells are kind of middle plays or small and your nuts are tiny. So like it's all that's exactly <laughs> how it was. Uh, well done. All right. Four. When looking at the cross section of the human tibia, one finds the red marrow in the A, medullary cavity, B, cancellous bone, C, periosteum, or D, ease nuts? I'm 99% sure it's medullary cavity. Is that your final answer? I know, I know it's correct, but like, what was the third one again? Periosteum. Yeah, no, it's not that. Yeah, it's medullary cavity, yeah. Correct. All right, this is the final oh, yeah. question. You've already, Elizabeth, if you are Elizabeth G, if you're out there listening, you have a qualified, you have won the t-shirt. You will be receiving a link with a, a promotional link. When you click that, it will take you to our store where you will be able to get the shirt and the shipping for free. Congratulations. But this one is for kicks and giggles and a bonus and fun. Name the fallacy committed in this statement. My son listened mm. to Taylor Swift as a kid, and now he's gay. Is that A? The wait. Do you want to see if you can name it without the uh, multiple choices, or do you the want the multiple cor choices? correlation? Correlation and causation. But that's not what the name of the fallacy is. Oh fuck! All okay, right. okay. Give me the give me the names then. Yeah. Is it A the genetic fallacy? B the mm. Post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy, or C, begging the claim, or D.E.'s nuts? I think I'm trying to remember because, like, that, that's the, like, the names of these things fucking suck. Um, that's true. I th think I want to say genetic. Uh, because that's like, no, no, it's a, a, a post hoc ergo proctor hoc, I think. Correct. Hell yeah. Yeah. A genetic fallacy would be more like, it, uh, my son is gay because he, uh, well, how would you, how would I make it? Uh, the genetic fallacy is like the origin fallacy. It originated, you know, the. Yeah. That's wrong because Yeah, that's that's where I was confused. I was like, is the gayness originating? But then I was like, no, it has to be like the arguments originating from a thing, therefore I do or don't like it. And it's right. like it's like argument from authority, but worse. Yeah, it's almost the opposite. Like uh uh that's wrong because Fox News said it kind of thing. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, that's genetic fallacy for sure. Yeah. Well, well done. You have one we'll uh little little applause here. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I All love, right. I love this. Get those soundboard. people out of your house. This soundboard is the shit. It's got it's got the theme song on it. Oh. Obviously, it's how I'm talking to you right through my phone. Just a Bluetooth connection. Uh, it's got multiple mic. I love this soundboard. I'm I'm very happy that. And I I don't even have it connected to a computer right now. I can literally take it with me, record stuff anywhere, and uh, and I'm good to go. Nice. It's tight. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about my soundboard. You might want one one day. I don't know if you ever do a podcast. <laughs> uh, that's all I need you for, unless you want to stick around for the comments from the last episode that I did with Eve, which you are welcome to do. But I, I understand you're a hungry fella, and I don't want to keep you from that. I uh, yeah, and I'm I am I'm I'm quite. I've got a lot going on. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, it was it was wild. It was better um, than you thought. Uh, it thank was you to do, wasn't it? Like you, you went in, like, was, uh, and then you had a good time. I bet. I, I, what I think is really notable is that this was just a phone call between you and I. Like this, the 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 length of time we've been talking, the shit we've yeah. covered, the the irreverence of the conversation. This has been exactly what a phone call between you and I is usually like. But a little short, <laughs> a little bit shorter. <laughs> yeah, if, if we're being honest, yeah, 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 exactly. We've had yeah. some three and four hour ones before. That's for sure. 
Uh, no, I, I appreciate, and I appreciate that you quickly made time to get it done. I basically, I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, before we go further and I'll, I'll, I wonder if I should have looped this at the beginning or I'll, maybe I'll add it at the beginning, but, uh, we're obviously talking to a, mostly an audience of patrons. Do you want to mention what your Patreon link is so that anybody who wants to cross support, go ahead and let them know. Yeah. Yeah, go to patreon.com slash renegade science teacher or just go to valkylabs.com and you can find like all my links to all my things on there and that's pretty easy. Um, my lowest tier is $3. It's pretty chill. So, and and uh, the the thing is like uh, the the shit that you get on my Patreon at the higher tiers is like, you know, a, a Zoom meeting once a month. Uh, you get in my science probably book club, things like that. But uh, most of it's just bonus content about just like shit that I'm doing. Like I, I don't, I don't post any like extra stuff like Jimmy does. I'm by, by, I'm not saying my Patreon isn't worth it, but like <laughs> I think that education should be free, and so like I try to keep everything free. But but Patreon is um, a fun and exciting and accessible place for everybody who wants to spend three dollars at least. Cool, cool. I and for the I, I as I do these shows, certain things come up, and I go, oh, I want to make sure we do that again in future shows. Make that a segment. So in the future, I will try to make sure that uh, everybody who while they're promoting their patreon do slightly shit on my patreon uh let's make sure we make that a tradition now <laughs> uh, for sure for sure for real man i i really appreciate you doing this and i'm glad we're getting i'm trying to get as much done with you before you leave for the summer so uh yeah imagine i will i will probably annoy you more before you go though probably won't do another one of this podcast before you you head out uh but we'll see uh, yeah, whatever works for you, man. Seriously, I'm, 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 I'm easy. So yeah, uh, I've got, uh, uh, I don't know when this is going to come out, but, uh, I think I've got like today. three or f it's coming out today. So I've got like four more, um, things on the line. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm doing a show with Roxanne. We're doing it cause I want on, I believe next Friday, um, on, uh, Monday, I'm doing the Sunday show tomorrow on Monday. I'm doing skeptic talk with my friend Morticia. She's a microbiologist. And I think I'm doing the next Sunday show as well. So like, yeah. uh, tune into all those things and send lots of super chats and, uh, help me, uh, 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 make those shows as weird as possible because they're going to be some of my last shows for a while. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I've got one more. I've got one more in, uh, in, in, uh, May, I'm going to do one more skeptic talk with Jesse. And then that's going to be my last, uh, uh, on our performance for a minute. Plus, you'll be doing, you'll be participating in the uh, charity streams. Yes, I'll be in the charity stream as well. Yes, that first weekend of May. That is correct, and I think uh, Austin is going to be my co-host for my little segment there. And one other person, I don't remember who. We're doing panels of three this year instead of two because we have enough people. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, you'll have one other. It might be Seth. I don't remember though. I'm done hanging with Seth. That's nice as fuck. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, you're on the Sunday show with uh, Eve this week, and at the end of the Sunday show, we're going to preview a portion of this week of 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 this podcast. Right on. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be All cool. Right. That's another reason. Yeah, I'm really excited to popular. work with Eve. I've She's I've great. been friends with Eve on uh, TikTok for a while. I met her once at a party. She's a very very nice person. We've never had the chance to actually work together though. I'm really excited to see how that goes. That's going to be a good show. I might even watch it, which I watch so little of our stuff. Uh, just make sure you do yeah, stop by yeah. five. Do stop by five. You know, you gotta, we gotta, yes, we gotta make sure that we don't bleed for so into many other reasons. stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, it's great talking to you. Thank you again for doing this. I'm gonna read the comments off to people and uh, do the outro, but uh, I appreciate you, buddy. Right on. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go soak. Uh, uh, but uh, it's been, been tons of fun being here. <laughs> that was a, a callback to your Mormonism. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go away now and get some food and then uh, get back to work. But uh, this has been uh, the, the most, podcast i've been on all day hell yeah you go enjoy your <laughs> succulent chinese meal <laughs> i certainly will thanks See for you. listening everybody goodbye later dude well that was fun and it always is i the guy cracks me up i just like him he's a good man he's a fun man and uh, he's long winded. That's for sure. The, uh, the, but I don't want anybody to think the crickets thing was actually done out of anger or bitterness or anything. It was, it was, he and I can both go on for a long, long time. And, um, I just hope one day he's as confident pushing me along as I am with him. Cause I deserve it. I really do. But I just love the guy. He's, he's, his passion is infectious. His, his kindness is compassion on top of his, but he's just a good dude. And, and it's fun. He's like, 
I'm trying to remember what show it was, but I watched, oh, what was it? Where just somebody was trying, to, they like hired an investigator. It was like, go find everything you can, all, all of the dirty laundry, all the skeletons in the closet. And then he goes and looks and there are none. Like there's nothing. The guy's like perfect. Uh, that's kind of how I feel where I'm just like waiting for that day of like, what part of you sucks? And that's so far nothing. I, the guy's just a good guy. He's a good man, good friend, good person. 